Last night in game one of the World Series, a great pitching matchup produced a 1-0 game through seven. The Yankees' Orlando Hernandez was dominant. One hit, 10 strikeouts, enhancing his building reputation as one of the best postseason pitchers ever. And Greg Maddox, four times the Cy Young Award winner, had blanked the Bombers into the eighth. But in the World Series, great performances can be erased or overshadowed by the smallest of things. With two on and none out in the Yankee eighth, one of those things occurred. Gets this one down. Well placed. Hunter has to make a good play, and then it squirts out of his hand. The bases are loaded. If Brian Hunter, just in the game for his glove, had made that play, it's likely the whole inning unfolds differently. Instead, the Yankees took advantage and did a number of little things that produced four runs in that inning. Now the Braves face game two, knowing that if the Yankees win again tonight, the series may not be coming back to Atlanta. Game two, next. This is the E-Trade World Series pregame show. Tonight, it's game two. The New York Yankees versus the Atlanta Braves. And in game two, here are the pitchers. The veteran David Cohn, who's 12-9 regular season, included a perfect game. He's 1-0 in the playoffs against Kevin Millwood, 18-7 for the year, 2-0 in the division series in LCS for the Braves. Hi and welcome to Game 2 in Atlanta. I'm Bob Costas. The first pitch is a little more than a half hour away. Joe Morgan will join me later for the call. But coming up next, hosted by Hannah Storm, it's the pregame show, a pregame show that includes the introduction of baseball's all-century team. Now, 18 of the 30 members of that squad are living, and all 18 of those living legends are here tonight in Atlanta. This is something you will not want to miss. For that and the rest of the pregame show, here's Hannah. Thanks, Bob. Well, it's another chilly night in Georgia, and the Atlanta Braves looking to heat up their bats tonight. have inserted three new hitters in the starting lineup for Game 3. Brave skipper Bobby Cox has three left-handed batters going tonight. Keith Lockhart at second base. Ozzie Guillen at shortstop and catcher Greg Myers. He replaces NLCS MVP Eddie Perez. Now, Perez is suffering from a broken blood vessel on a finger on his left hand. He could play tonight, though, if needed. And the new lineup faces Yankees starter David Cohn, whose season included a perfect game. But a year and a half ago, Cohn feared he would never pitch again. An aneurysm in his right shoulder threatened his pitching career. I thought it was all over. And, uh, you know, I've had new life, and I've actually probably pitched better at some point since the aneurysm than I did before. First World Series experience in 92 with the Blue Jays, obviously, ironically against the Braves, it was, it was kind of a blur. You don't really take in your, your surroundings, uh, whereas this time around, it's my fourth World Series, I'm really trying to appreciate it more. As Cohn tries to savor the moment, the Braves look to salvage a split at home. They turn not to one of their Cy Young veterans, but to their young pitching sensation, Kevin Millwood, who has two wins and a save this postseason. And now Millwood faces a virtual must-win game for the Braves. But no matter how he pitches, Atlanta's revamped lineup needs to generate more offensive support than what they managed in Game 1. Cincinnati Reds all-star shortstop Barry Larkin went into the batter's laboratory to seek solution for the ailing Atlanta bats against David Cohn. If I'm an Atlanta Brave, I know we got two hits last night. We were basically dominated by a guy that throws the ball from all different arm angles. The pitcher tonight for the Yankees, David Cohn, he also throws the ball from all different arm angles. So I'm thinking, we had experience with it last night, and tonight we definitely have a chance. One big key is that David Cohn does not hide the ball in his delivery to the plate as El Duque does. That way, the hitters can pick up the ball early, recognize the pitches, and put more balls in play. The second key, find ways to get on base. That way, the mistakes to your big boppers, Jones and Jordan, are now three-run bombs as opposed to solo shots. In that clubhouse, the Braves are thinking, let's win this game tonight and head to the Big Apple Tide. Chipper Jones generated the only Braves run last night with his fourth inning homer. 
It has been an MVP season for the Atlanta third baseman, but last October it was Jones' personal life that made headlines. He publicly acknowledged extramarital affairs, one of which produced a son. Jones' all-American image was forever changed. To be honest with you, there was a tremendous amount of guilt when I would come here to the park, see all the chipper signs all over the park, and you know, it, it kind of got to me at times. Um, I realized that people were going to put me on a pedestal and people expect me to act a certain way. Um, but I went through a period in my life where I um, didn't make a lot of good decisions. and You felt hypocritical? I did. You know, I felt like uh, people saw me one way and I was leading a, a completely different life back behind the scenes and uh, I didn't want to do that anymore. So Jones publicly acknowledged his mistakes, then had to deal with the consequences. You know, it cost me my marriage um, and I'm forever sorry for that. Um, but I think you can pull goods out of everything. You know, I have a son now, 18 months old, that is awesome. You know, every time I see him, it's great. I almost break down in tears every time I see him. Um, I want to be a role model for him, you know, and to do that, uh, I had to straighten out my life. Jones also told me that he's finally at peace with himself and that that was a major factor contributing to his success this season. Coming up next, the introduction of the MasterCard All-Century Team. If Cuba had such a team, one member would surely be El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, the hero of last night's World Series opener. The payoff pitch. He struck out the side. He's dropping down and throwing an assortment of breaking balls. He is very sharp tonight. Is he a... Listo. El lanzamiento viene, le tiró y se fue de boca prácticamente. Okay, let's take another call for our expert. We've got Ed in Cleveland on the line. You guys are way off. That sector's trending up, and with overseas support and strong earnings, it's an obvious buy record. Ed! Uh, consumer confidence is strong. Ed! Excuse me. I'm on TV. I don't care. Take out the garbage. The whole world can hear you. Take it out. I'm analyzing security. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Remember compliments you receive. Forget the insults. Be nice to your siblings. Air your best link to your past and the people most likely to stick with you in the future. Finally, a minivan to live by. Introducing the all-new Mazda MPV. Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm calling long distance with one of those 1010 numbers. Makes you crazy. Oh, it's crazy. It's nuts. It'll make you nuts. But with the new AT&T one rate seven cent plan, calls are just seven cents a minute. Yeah, but you can only call at certain times, right? Seven cents a minute all day, every day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week? That's simple. Yes, it is. So I don't have to use those 1010 numbers ever again? No, you don't. All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. Excuse me, what, what are you doing? MasterCard presents the Major League Baseball All-Century Team. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome your All Century team. Accompanied by Commissioner Bud Selig and Hall of Fame broadcaster Vin Scully. social upheaval, through economic booms and economic depression, through times of enlightenment and times of scandal, there has been one constant, the great game of baseball. Tonight, with our partners at MasterCard International, we honor this great game and the 15,000 players who played it during the 20th century by bringing you the special few who transcended the eras in which they played. By vote of the fans, they are the greatest players of the 20th century. They are the all-century team. To introduce this team, it is my privilege to turn the program over to one of the truly great broadcasters of all time, the voice of the Dodgers for the past 50 years, Mr. Vin Scully. Thank you, Commissioner. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you. It's an honor and a privilege to play a small part in tonight's festivities and to bring this wonderful gathering to baseball fans throughout the world. We're here to honor the great players at a very precious moment, a moment that we will not relive in our lifetime. So pull up a chair. And let's meet the members of Major League Baseball All-Century Team presented by MasterCard. First of all, your All-Century Pitchers. He is the only five-time Cy Young Award winner. He struck out 20 batters in a game on two separate occasions. Roger Clemens. He exemplified competitiveness and consistency 
He won seven straight World Series games for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Gibson. A seven-time strikeout king. He was baseball's most dominant left-handed pitcher of the first half of the century. Lefty Grove. His durability and dominance led to his nickname, The Big Train. He won 416 games, including a record 110 shutouts. Walter Johnson. He dominated the early 60s, winning three Cy Young Awards, pitching four no-hitters. His ERA in 57 innings of World Series play, an amazing 0.95, Sandy Koufax. He was one of baseball's first heroes, pitching, if you can believe it, three shutouts in six days in the 1905 World Series. Christy Mathewson. He holds the career strikeout record, 5,714. He tossed an amazing seven no-hitters. The Ryan Express, no He won 20 or more games 13 times. Is the winningest left-handed pitcher in baseball history, Warren Spahn. He set the standard for pitching excellence and his record, 511 wins, 749 complete games, will likely stand for all time. Cy Young. <laughs> Next, your all-century catchers. He was the backbone and most feared hitter for the big red machine, winning two MVP awards and 10 gold gloves, Johnny Bench. He was one of the game's best clutch performers. He still holds the record, most hits and games in the World Series, three-time MVP, Yogi Berra. <laughs> Next, your all-century first baseman. He was called the Iron Horse and was one of the great sluggers of all time. He still holds the record for 23 career Grand Slams, Lou Gehrig. He hit 49 home runs as a rookie in 1987. 
and a record 70 home runs to captivate the nation last year. He reached 500 career home runs in fewer games than anyone in history. Mark McGuire! Next, we honor your all-century second baseman. He still holds the record for the highest single-season batting average, hitting 424 in 1924. Rogers Hornsby. He was a six-time All-Star. And in 1947, he changed the game forever when he broke the color barrier of America's national sport, baseball, and American legend, Jackie Robinson. Next, your all-century shortstops. <laughs> he delighted Cubs fans with his 512 home runs, steady fielding, cheerful approach to the game, two-time MVP. Hey, let's play two! Ernie Banks! He has won two MVP awards, hit 400 home runs, and is nine hits away from 3,000. He played in a record 2,632 consecutive games. Cal Ripken, Jr. He was the game's most complete star at the beginning of the century and won 10 National League batting titles. Honus Wagner. <laughs> Next, your all-century third baseman. A clutch hitter who set the modern-day standard for defensive excellence. 16-time Gold Glove winner, Brooks Robinson. He possessed an unprecedented combination of power, defensive skill, and speed three-time MVP, ten-time Gold Glove winner, Mike Schmidt. And finally, your all-century outfielder.
probably know of him well. He was called the Georgia Peach, but he was the most feared hitter and base runner of his time. His 367 career batting average still ranks as the all-time best, Ty Cobb. He was an all-star in each of his 13 seasons. His 56-game hitting streak in 1941, one of the game's most cherished records, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. One of baseball's most complete players. He has won nine consecutive gold gloves. And at the age of 29, he already has 398 home runs. The youngest all-century player, Ken Griffey Jr. game's most productive sluggers ever. His 1956 Triple Crown season was one of the best in baseball history. Mickey Mantle! He was the giant Say Hey Kid. He played in 24 All-Star games, won 11 gold gloves for his electrifying play in center field. His 660 home runs are third all-time. Say hey, Willie May! This three-time MVP and 24-time All-Star for the St. Louis Cardinals was among the greatest all-around defensive players of the 40s and 50s. Stand the man, Stan Musial! He was known as Charlie Hustle. He holds the major league record for most career hits, 4,256. Pete Rose.
He was a 24-time All-Star. He batted over 300, 14 times. Baseball's career RBI leader, and he became baseball's all-time home run king 25 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, with apologies to the playwright, for one brief shining moment, this is Camelot. Ladies and gentlemen, your all-century team. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Kindly remove your caps and to honor America, join in the singing of our national anthem, which will be presented tonight by Grammy Award-winning MCA recording artist, Patti LaBelle. Oh, say can you see So proudly we held as the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the Coming up next, Hank Aaron will throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Nine programs, $27. Five hot dogs, six pennants, $45. One big puffy hand, $6. Their first big league ball game, priceless. There are some things money can't buy, 
For everything else, there's MasterCard, the card at the heart of Major League Baseball. day for the IT manager. Everyone wants everything now. Luckily, there's CDW, your direct solutions provider. CDW uses 50,000 top name products to give you complete systems, including custom configuration and pre-installed software. Why get hung up in work when CDW is here to make life easier? CDW, computing solutions built for business. Someday in two weeks. It was a matter of honor. A forbidden love sparks an epic battle. <laughs> that could destroy their world and ours. Leprechauns, only on NBC, Sunday in two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the pitcher's mound, where Hank Aaron is with us on behalf of the All-Century team to throw out the ceremonial first ball for tonight's game. Let's give Hank a big hand. And what a special night here at Turner Field. Emotional moment there for Hank Aaron and the Braves fans. It's just across the street at the old Fulton County Stadium, now a parking lot. Aaron hit one of baseball's most historic home runs. Career number 715, which lifted him past Babe Ruth on the all-time career home run list. And Aaron, since his retirement, part of the Braves front office as tonight the Atlanta Braves look to even the World Series with the Yankees at a game apiece. Meanwhile, for Pete Rose, tonight's ceremony marking a return to the baseball spotlight. He's with Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Anna. Pete, congratulations. It was quite an ovation. Heart stopping. Pete, let me ask you now. It seems as though that there is an opening. The American public is very forgiving. Are you willing to show contrition, admit that you bet on baseball, and make some sort of an apology to that effect? Not at all, Jim, not at all. Uh, I'm not gonna admit something that didn't happen. I, I know you get tired of hearing me say that, but uh, I appreciate the ovation. I appreciate the American uh, fans voting me on that all-century team, and I'm just a small part of a big deal tonight. With the overwhelming evidence no, no, that is in that report, why not make that I, step with this opening? This is too much of a festive night to worry about that. I mean, I, because I don't know what evidence you're talking about. I mean, just show it to me. I well, mean, but that report saying, did, but we don't well, want to debate that, Pete. Well, why not? Why don't we? Why do we want to believe everything he says? Why well, you we, signed why a paper we, uh, acknowledging the ban. Why did you sign it if you didn't agree to? Yeah, be but it for also life? it also says I can apply for reinstatement after one year. If you remember correctly, in the press conference, matter of fact, my statement was I can't wait for my little girl to be a year old so I can apply for reinstatement at my press conference. So you forgot they had that clause that was in there. Well, you have reapplied for you have applied for reinstatement in yeah. 1997. Have you heard back from Commissioner Selig? Uh, no, and uh, that kind of surprises me. It's only been two years, though, and he's got a lot of things on his mind, but uh, uh, I hope to someday. Pete, it's been 10 years since you've been allowed on the field. Yeah. Obviously, the approach that you have taken has not worked. Why not, at this point, take a different approach? Oh, when you say it hadn't worked, what do you exactly mean? I you're mean, not allowed in baseball. You're not allowed to earn a living in the game you love, and you're not allowed to be in the Hall of Fame. And well, that should I be your ultimate approach. goal. That was apply for reinstatement. And, uh, I hope Bud Stewart considers that. It gives me an opportunity. I won't need a third chance. All Pete, I need is a second chance. Pete, those who will hear this tonight will say that you have been your own worst enemy and continue to be. How do you respond to that? Uh, what, 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 in what way are you talking about? By not acknowledging what seems to be overwhelming uh, evidence. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised you're, 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 you're bombarding me like this. I mean, I'm doing an interview with you on a great night, a great occasion, uh, a great ovation. Everybody seems to be in a good mood. 
and you're bringing up something that happened 10 years ago. Well, I bring is, it up this, because I think yeah, people this, would like to see you get this, it on. This, Pete, we got to go. This, we got a game. prosecutor's brief. It's not an interview, and I'm very surprised at you. I am, really. Well, some would be surprised that you didn't take the opportunity. Let's go upstairs to Hannah. Congratulations, Pete. Bob Costas and Joe Morgan will have the first pitch of Game 2 of the 1999 World Series after this. This has been the E-Trade World Series pregame show. And the snow emergency is still in effect. In other news, the market rebounded today. Ooh, the market. Gene, buy one of them tech stocks. Shake it off. No, invest in pork belly. No! Dump your money in plastics. While you're buying things, why don't you buy me some legs? It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. I'd like my spleen back, too. I don't know where it is. We've been struggling at the plate, but there's a nice breeze blowing out towards right field. From spring to fall, you can feel it in the air. From the sunshine leagues of Florida to the farmlands of the prairies. From the schoolyards of New York to the golden fields of California. It's allergy season. That's why there's Claritin, the number one prescribed antihistamine in America. Talk to your doctor about Claritin, and when the umpire yells, play ball, you'll be ready. Claritin, the official allergy medication of Major League Baseball. Claritin has a low occurrence of side effects such as headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth, similar to sugar pill. The network television premiere, Men in Black, NBC. You know, people still ask me about the crash. I'm tired of talking about the crash. I mean, first of all, it wasn't even really a crash. 1929. That was a crash. Yeah, that was bad. Maybe it was more like a market correction. Typically defined by like 10, 20% drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which we consider the economic factors that are affecting the current risk premiums. When we created a smarter kind of investment firm... I guess it's not that surprising. We created a smarter kind of investor. What do you know about expense ratios? An expense ratio is a percentage. I'm not going to become one of those old men who sit in lawn chairs on driveways and regret adventures I never took. To help you remember 10-10-3-4-5 International Long Distance, we're with Major League Soccer Stars 3, 4, and 5. Who is this guy? With 10-10-3-4-5, you can save up to 60% on international calls from home. Use your hands. Yeah. Calls to Tijuana are just 20 cents a minute. In Mexico City are just 29 cents a minute. Go long. Long. Talk as long as you want for a low flat rate anytime. Oh, look. We're up to 60% off international calls from home. Dial 10-10-3-4-5 today. I like your hair. Very, uh, bonito. Good morning, Gina. Hey. We're all set. Can I just finish? I'm going to make a trip. Yeah, well, we're chasing daylight. We really got to I get you water or anything. Can I just go for one second? We're ready. Got to go to my train. I, I know, I know. We just, it's just, just, yeah. I, I would defend you, but I am prevented. I shall defend myself. I must trade now. Go! Go! Nice shot. TV Waterhouse, member of New York Stock Exchange. Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. Tonight, it's game two. The New York Yankees versus the Atlanta Braves. Turner Field still reverberating with the cheers for the 18 living members of the All-Century team and the dozen all-time greats who could be here only in spirit. And as the cameras pan those dugouts, you see a Paul O'Neill applauding a Willie Mays or a Chipper Jones, a Ted Williams. The appreciative look on the face of Joe Torre, who played with and against many of those who are on the field tonight. 
It sets the stage in a beautiful way for game two of this World Series. I'm joined by Hall of Famer Joe Morgan, who himself placed very high in the all-century balloting. I know you had goosebumps up here. Well, I did, Bob. I mean, if you're a player and you watched all these great players on the field, I think it's got to inspire these players to have a great ball game tonight. And all the players who are around Major League Baseball, they, it has to inspire them to play great next season. This is the game that has the longest and richest history of any American sport. We got a taste of it tonight. Now let's go back to recent history. Just last night, a 1-0 lead for Greg Maddox and the Braves, top of the eighth. If Chuck Knobloch's bunt had been right. handled, the whole inning might have unfolded differently. You're right, Bob, but I think what the Yankees showed last night is why they've won nine straight World Series games. They know how to win, whether it be just a single through the infield, starting a rally, taking a base on balls, executing a perfect bunt, getting some help from the defense. They know how to win. Derek Jeter here gets a single to tie the ball game. A drawn-in infield allowed Paul O'Neill's ball to go through, which put the Yankees ahead for good. This made it 3-1 as Chuck Knobloch scored the run. And you can see they did this with a lot of small ball, not the Bronx Bombers we've all come to know and love. A two sacrifice bunts, a couple of stolen bases, and even some base on ball help from the Atlanta Braves, which is unusual. As someone once said, a nick here, a nick there, and pretty soon you're bleeding to death. Okay, now to tonight's game and the pitchers, Cone and Millwood. Well, David Cone is going to be a little bit like Orlando Hernandez last night in that he throws from a lot of different angles. He throws a splitter, which Hernandez doesn't throw, but he has that sidearm fastball that is devastating. And Kevin Millwood showed how good a pitcher he can be in game one, two of the division series. He pitches a one-hitter against the Astros. He beat the Mets to win his second postseason game. He could not hold a five to nothing lead in game six as he left the ballpark. He will have to be very sharp tonight. You see he's given up 13 hits in 12 innings. I expect David Cohn to be sharp. Kevin Millward is going to have to bring his best game with him tonight as well. Cohn, as everyone knows, works best on long rest. He pitches tonight on nine days rest. Here is the Budweiser lineup for the New York Yankees, and it's the same as last night with the exception that Brocious moves up from eighth to seventh, and Joe Girardi, rather than Jorge Posada, will be the catcher. Cone is a decent hitter. He's had his moments at the plate and, of course, spent a lot of time in the National League. Kevin Millwood was really the best pitcher for the Braves over the course of the full season at 18 and 7 and 2 and 0 in the postseason. He was very consistent, Bob, throughout the season. Let's take a look at, at the defense tonight. There you see Chipper Jones and Ryan Klesko have contributed to the Atlanta infield having 10 postseason errors. They've got some changes. Lockhart at second base and Guillen at shortstop tonight. So this is a little different infield than the one we've seen most of the LCS and here in the World Series for the Braves. Interesting that you'd make changes at two such important defensive positions on the same night. The entire middle of the diamond is different. Flash bulbs popping all around the park as Rocky Rowe says that's strike one. Rowe has the plate, American League up. Steve Ripley of the National League at first. Darrell Cousins of the American League at second. Jerry Davis, National League at third. Jim Joyce, American League in left. Randy Marsh, last night's plate umpire from the National League, is in right. 0 and 2. And that's what Kevin Millwood does best. He stays ahead of the hitters. He doesn't have an overpowering fastball. He's got a good fastball, good curveball, change, and slider. But none of these pitches are devastating. But his control is good, and he usually stays ahead of the hitters. He's just 24 years old from North Carolina. Pitched well for them the previous two seasons, but never got into any postseason play. Line drive over Guillen's head. A leadoff hit for Knobloch. Big turn at first, but he'll hold there. Knobloch, an excellent high fastball hitter. And Millwood gets ahead. I don't know if he was trying to waste this pitch or what, but he gets a high fastball out over the plate. And Knobloch rips it to center field. High fastball right out over the plate. Good two-strike hitting there by Knobloch. And he gives the Yankees a start here in the top of the first. Knobloch stole 28 bases this year. There was a time earlier in his career with the Twins where he swiped more than 60. Now here's Jeter who has a 14 game postseason hitting streak. Two for four last night. Ball one to him. The game time temperature is 49 degrees. The wind chill 39. 
And Joe Torre brought a different style of baseball to the American League when he went to the Yankees. He will hit and run. He plays a National League style game in the American League. Another base knock. Gerald Williams over to try and cut it off and he'll hold Knobloch to second. Consecutive singles to begin the game. I think both both of the pitches will be up and that's a problem for Millwood. He is not a high ball pitcher. That pitch is about belt high and on the inside part of the plate. And Jeter rips it over Chipper Jones head. Good play in left field by Gerald Williams to hold Knobloch at second base. So Jeter wastes no time extending that postseason hitting streak to 15. Here's O'Neill. His bases loaded hit through a drawn in infield snapped a one all tie and gave the Yankees a 3 1 lead. Eventually they won game one 4 to 1. Called strike. That's where Kevin Millwood wants to throw his fastball, especially to the right-handed hitters. He wants to stay down on the right-handers, not as much so against the left-handed hitters, but you have to stay down against the right-handed hitters on the New York Yankees. Sliced foul 0-2. Bernie Williams, the cleanup man, will be next. <laughs> Millwood checks the runners. And his 0-2 pitch is hit hard but foul. It got a piece of Randy Marsh the umpire down the right field line. Well Randy started in the foul territory and the ball kept hooking. It appeared that the ball was going to be on his right. Watch it's on his right there so he starts moving to his left but the ball starts hooking and it chases him and it finds him. But he seems to be OK. O'Neill had a good pitch to hit he feels like pitch was up a little bit and in and he pulled it foul. There's Randy Marsh. O'Neill saying to himself that's for any calls you missed behind the plate <laughs> last night. Another 0 2 pitch in the dirt and blocked by Myers. One of the theories about pitching to the Yankee players is that you have to be able to come inside with hard stuff. That's why some of the pitchers in the league who have given them problems were Jared Wright, Bartolo Colon. They had good fastballs and they were able to pitch them inside. I really think you have to go inside occasionally to keep them honest, but if you do not have a good enough fastball, you better try to stay away from these hitters. Nope, foul, still one and two. And if you're the Braves this is actually the last thing you wanted to see is your first two hitters get on base here in the first inning. Because your lineup has not been scoring a lot of runs and you definitely do not want to fall too many runs behind early in this game. That's why Bobby Cox has Guillen Lockhart and Myers in there to try to shake up the lineup. That's why he played his infield in with nobody out on the bases loaded last night. He thought his team couldn't score. Fouled off again. Even though they scored 10 runs in the game which clinched the pennant. If you take Eddie Perez who was 10 for 20 and isn't in the lineup tonight if you take him out. They hit 194 as a team against the Mets in the six games of the NLCS. And in the game they scored the 10 runs they had a lot of help. They scored five in the first a couple of hit batsmen some errors so they they have not proven that they can sustain a rally. Another line drive, another base hit. Andrew Jones charging it. Willie Randolph waves not lock home. He scores. And the Yankees are quickly on top. Bob, the first five hitters in this Yankee order are special. I mean, they know how to hit, they know how to work the count. This is a curveball, not a bad pitch. It's out, out over the middle of the plate. O'Neill doesn't try to pull it. He just extends back through the middle and he lines a base hit to center field. 
Andrew Jones comes up. He makes a good throw here in that he keeps it down. If he'd have tried to throw Knobloch out at the plate, Jeter would have been able to move to third base easily. So they keep the double play in order and keep the runner off third base. It doesn't get any easier from Millwood. Here's Bernie Williams. A fastball high. If you believe the numbers, Williams is due. Here's a 342 hitter. That's this year, last year's American League batting titleist. But he's never done much in the World Series. 0 for 2 with two walks last night. 2 and 0 the count. In the 96 and 98 World Series combined, plus game one this year, Williams is 5 for 42 in World Series play. Bob, I could hear someone from the Atlanta dugout yelling, where was that last pitch? And there you see what he has done in his last two World Series. Or what he hasn't done. <laughs> Hitter's pitch. And he fouls it off. Peter, who's singled, is at second. O'Neill, who had an RBI hit, is at first. And the 2-1 pitch. Hit back up the middle. Guillen takes it. Steps on the ball. Throws to first. And that takes some of the pressure off Millwood. Jeter at third, but with two down now. Very important at bat there for Bernie Williams. And a great pitch from Kevin Millwood. He gets in on his hands. 2-0. Oh, he went inside with a fastball. He comes back in. Again, he jams him. And he fights it off. He hit it back through the middle, but he didn't have enough on it to get it through because he got jammed. Ozzie Guillen. To first baseman Ryan Klesko and is now two down but now at least they still have a run at third but now they're, he's there with two down and not a bad situation if you can get out of this right now. First one to Tino Martinez popped foul Tino was 0 for 3 with a walk last night he struck out twice. Torrey's team has won nine straight World Series games. They're eight and one in the postseason this year. Up high, a ball and a strike. And when you win nine straight World Series games, Bob, that tells you how good an experienced team they are because sometimes you have to win scoring a lot of runs. Other times you have to play small ball as they did last night. And other times you just have to play great defense and have good pitching behind you. That one's in there, one and two. Come to their feet at Turner Field. In anticipation of the pitch that could end the inning. And get them out of this, all things considered, with minimal damage. Martinez steps out of the box. Liner up the middle, base hit, and it's 2 0 New York. Four singles in the inning. All of them hit hard. Well, he's been hurt with two two-strike breaking balls. Here's a two-strike curveball to Martinez. He stays with it and just lines it right back through the middle for a base hit. It's not that it's a bad pitch. The ball is down. But Martinez stays right with it. Lines it back through the middle for a base hit. Very similar to Paul O'Neill's swing. Both of them hit two-strike curveballs. Ricky Lede takes ball one. Fastball high, two and oh. Entering the game, Millwood led the majors in opponents' batting average. Even better than Pedro Martinez in Boston by three 
thousandths of a point. He's faced five hitters in this game. Four of them have singled. Williams hit into a double play. A strike till a day. Three and one. And the other bad number on that chart for the Braves is that David Cohn is fifth. As far as opponents batting average is concerned. Full count now. Lesko is playing behind Martinez who will be off with the pitch. And it's popped out of play. Another 3 2 pitch. Taken for ball four. Millwood's troubles continue. Now they'll face Brocious, who was three for four last night. Third baseman, number 18, Scott Brocious. Leo Mazzoni to the mound. Longtime Brave pitching coach. He was a left handed pitcher himself in the Giants and A's organizations. Never got higher than Triple A in 10 years in the minors. One of the most respected pitching coaches in the game. Bobby Cox fretting about his offense. And now David Cohn has been staked to at least a 2 0 lead. Let's look back at what Scott Brocious did last night. Well, he had three base hits, two high fastballs, one to right field from Maddox. And then when he started a game winning rally, hit this breaking ball. Pretty good pitch by Maddox. He went out and got it and pulled it into left field for a base hit. Strike one to Scott, who hit just 247 for the season. But something about the postseason brings him to life. Look at that. Over 500 in the World Series. Strike going two. Well, he's been able to get ahead of the hitters. He has not been able to finish them off. Two strikes on O'Neill. Two strikes on Martinez. Two strikes on Lede. And they all reach base. Let's see if he can close the deal here. Waste that one. One and two. Terry Mulholland. A multi purpose pitcher, long relief, situation guy, occasional starter, gets up early in the Atlanta pen. Two and two. Hit hard, Guillen dives and can't get to it. The Yankees will have another run. A Brocious single makes it 3 0. Well, he got ahead of Brocious 0 and 2, and again, he was not able to finish him off. He tried to throw a couple of breaking balls, get him to chase in the dirt. He didn't. Now he comes with a fastball, gets too much of the plate. Guillen tried to keep it on the infield, but it goes into center field for a base hit. You can see that fastball pretty much caught a lot of the outside part of the plate. And Guillen makes the dive, but it's three to nothing Yankees. Two clutch two out base hits by Tino Martinez and now Scott Brocious. Brocious, last year's World Series MVP, now four for five in this series. Joe Girardi slices it foul.
Five singles in the inning for New York. They now have 11 hits so far in the series. Oh. All of them singles. But it's been effective. Up and in one and one. Cone may get to bat before he throws a pitch. Nubbed foul. A ball and two strikes. being lit up here in the top of the first Girardi lays off it's two and two and again his problem has been that he hasn't been able to just finish the hitters off and Girardi stays alive. And Millwood was actually scheduled to pitch game three in Yankee Stadium, but according to the newspaper today, he said he was glad that he was able to pitch here at home in front of his fans rather than having to pitch in Yankee Stadium. And he got his wish, of course, because Tom Glavin missed his start in game one and Maddox moved up to game one. So he moves up to game two. Maddox pitched well, but lost last night. A called strike three. But the Yankees send eight men to the plate in the first, and three of them score. We'll be back to Atlanta after this. Light, heat, and time are all enemies of beer. We can protect the beer from light with a brown bottle, and we protect beer from heat by ensuring that we keep it in a temperature-controlled environment. We then make sure that the consumer enjoys that beer as soon as possible. We are the only major domestic brewer that uses a born on dating system to ensure that our customers get the absolute best, most cared for, most perfect beer they can buy. Elevator to lobby. <laughs> By George. Contacts, $320. Treadmill, $800. Wonder Bra. $26. Facelift, $3,000. Being happy with who you are, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Happily accepted, most everywhere. what time it is please people are trying to sleep down there please let nothing stand in your way the four-wheel drive passport from Honda yeah let me get this straight yes are you actually saying I don't have to pay you a separate commission every time I trade a stock exactly I I'd pay an annual fee instead right is, is anyone getting this? If we this? don't pay you a commission every time we trade, what's your motivation? It's just like always, in your best interest. <laughs> Could you just explain it again? Maybe what it is is the fee is based on the value of our portfolios. So when we succeed, they succeed. Well, you'll, you'll have to be patient with us. This is all very new. <laughs> Bobby Cox has made changes in his lineup, hoping to find some bats who can get the job done. And he'll need it now down three nothing before they send a man to the plate. Andrew Jones dropped to eighth. It's the first time he's hit that low in the lineup all year. And the compound their problems you never want to give David Cohn a lead because that allows him to use more of the plate. In the past David has thrown a lot of pitches early in the ball game because he's trying to be fine and get through the first few innings. But when you give him a lead it gives him more margin for error and I think you'll see him getting more of the plate early in the counts. And Joe Girardi was the guy that caught his perfect game July the 18th of this year. At age 36, Cone became the second oldest man in baseball history to throw a perfect game. I can guess who the oldest would be. And he was on the all-century team today, Nolan Ryan. Uh -uh. He, he's the oldest, I think, to throw a no-hitter. He was in oh. his 40s. But yeah, he for would a, never throw a perfect game. A perfect game, yeah, too many walks. Right. But 
for a perfect game, the oldest is another member of the All-Century team, Cy Young, at age 37 in 1904 for the Boston Pilgrims. Let's check with Craig Sager. Well, Leo Mazzoni did not give Kevin Millwood a pep talk. He gave him a lecture. He said, what are you doing out there? You're overthrowing. You're pulling out. You're trying to be superhuman instead of good. Wow. Well, he certainly wasn't superhuman, and he wasn't even good in that first inning. But, Bob, that could be a result of him. This is his first World Series game. I mean, you often try to do too much, you know, until you get relaxed out there. So I, overthrowing is something that probably happens as a result of this being his first start in the World Series. Gerald Williams bounces it to short. Jeter charges and flips to Martinez. Let's take a look at the scouting report on David Cohn. You will see him throw a few pitches that look like Orlando Hernandez in that he'll drop down and throw his Laredo slider. But it, it, he must avoid a high pitch count. And I think what happens now is that he has a lead. He doesn't have to be as fine as he was before. He'll throw pitches over the heart of the plate just to get ahead of some hitters. We saw the pitch there to Gerald Williams right down the middle. Ozzie Guillen takes Walt Weiss's place at short and Brett Boone's spot in the batting order tonight. Hitting second in between Williams and Chipper Jones. Just looking to take a pitch and distract Cone. It's ball one. And we talked about Millwood maybe being a little excited, a little adrenaline rush there in this first World Series game. David Cohn said every time he goes out there now, it's much easier to start a World Series game. He says he's more relaxed each time he goes out there. I don't think you can ever get the feeling that this is just another game, but you can get to a point where you can keep your emotions in check. He drags a bunt, Cone picks it up, his throw is wide, and Guillen is on his way to second. Guillen may have had a plan all along. He bluffed the bunt and may have convinced the Yankee defense that he was just bluffing the bunt until he could take a strike. Then he dragged one on the 1-1 pitch. Well, it's not a good bunt, but he forces them to make a play. Usually you try to drag the ball past the pitcher. You see he doesn't. But Cohn doesn't have a good grip on the ball, and he knows he has to hurry, so he throws the ball away. Good job of base running by Guillen to get to second base. So he forced them to make a play, and he ends up at second base. Does cold weather factor in? I don't think so in that situation because the ball, he grabbed the ball, and then he lost it in his fingers. And he decided to try to push it to first base rather than re-grip it. Here's Chipper Jones. Taking ball one. It's a two base error. It is not a hit and an error. It's an error all the way. Bob, I think the cold weather affects the hitters and will affect the pitcher throwing a lot of pitches. But I don't think it affects you when you have to have time to make a play at first base. That one's in there. David Cohn. Is one of the best big game pitchers of his generation. Seven and three in playoff and World Series competition combined. Chipper Jones with a slow bouncer. Not block. Let's watch the throw. He underhands it to Martinez. And that's the second out. Let's see what the three runs allows is for. David Cohn to be able to challenge a Chipper Jones in that situation. Here's Knobloch. He's okay when he's going towards first base, although he underhands this instead of over the top. That's a long underhand toss, but hey, he's getting the job done. And until he hurts the Yankees, I'm sure they'll play him continuously. Here's Jordan with Guillen at third and two out. Taking strike one. One of my first coaches, old Spark Anderson, used to say, you can't hide middle infielders. They're going to have to make plays during the course of a series, and we'll just see how it goes for the remainder of the series. Cones 0-1 pitch. They checked down at first, and Jordan did not go around. This is 
one of those Laredo sliders. He drops down and throws it sidearm, and you can see it's well off the plate. And Jordan's barrel of his bat stopped very quickly, so he did not swing. This one is poked to right, down the line, and foul. That's right off the end of the bat. Same pitch slider away. Slider toward the outside part of the plate, just off the outside or just on. And you see Jordan just kind of reaches out and gets the end of the bat on the ball. With that kind of rotation on it, it was going to be very difficult for it to stay fair. Went foul by about 15 feet. Cones ahead of him, one and two. A drive to left, well hit. Back at the track is Lede, and it dies at the wall. Wind's blowing in, Bobby. And it kept that one in the park and kept it a 3 nothing game. Baseball isn't measured by time. It's measured by desire. The game moves toward the end, fueled by sweat and blood. And what matters then isn't how long it took to get there, but whether or not you have the stuff you need to finish it off. sandwich was good. Is there another one? We're saving it for Dave. You can't resist Wendy's bacon mushroom milk with all that bacon and cheddar. Hey, Dave, why don't you stay out a few more laps? Okay. Where's that sandwich? Here, I hope no one ate my lunch. Well, you gotta have one. You gotta have one. Okay, really simple. AT&T, seven cents a minute, all day, every day. That's it. The rest of this commercial is yours to enjoy as you choose. Make calls. All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only will you see this sign. A better life. Is it something you have? or something you build. At American General Financial Group, 50,000 men and women helped 12 million Americans build a bigger future with retirement services, investments, life insurance, and consumer loans. At American General, the future starts today. American General Financial Group, live the life you've imagined. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. By De Beers, the world's diamond expert since 1888. And by Nike. David Cohn gets a chance to use the bat as he leads off in the top of the second. He's a 153 career hitter. He's never had a homer. Nine career doubles. That's strike one. And Millwood gets ahead of him 0-2. In the playoffs, leading up to this World Series start, Kevin Millwood was 2-0 with a save thrown in and a poor performance in a no decision against the Mets in game six. But still he hasn't had a defeat hung on him since August 8th against the Giants. Trailing three nothing here. Bouncer to first. Klesko takes it himself. Let's go back to the bottom of the first when Brian Jordan brought people to their feet here at Turner Field and listen to Ned Yost the third base coach. Well hit. Back at the track is Lede and it dies at the wall. Wind's blowing in, Bobby. Go, ball. Go, ball. Get up. Get out of here. Dang it. Dang it is right. That could have cut it to 3-2 and made it a ball game again. And the wind is blowing in like from 
11 o'clock across to 2 o'clock, and I think that did knock the ball down because when he first hit it, I thought he hit it well enough to get it out. Ball one to Knobloch, who singled on an 0-2 pitch to start the Yankee first. Four of the five singles they got in the inning came with two strikes on the hitter. And when a major league pitcher gets you two strikes, he's usually able to put at least two of those four away. Throw it past him, one and one. Not a good sign for Millwood, though. He's not a high ball pitcher. And that pitch is up. That's the old two pitch that Knobloch hit was a high fastball for a base hit. When he's at his best, he's keeping the ball down and even getting hitters to chase pitches down and out of the strike zone. Here's what the scouts say about Millwood. When he's pitching well, he throws a heavy fastball and a hard slider. His curveball and changeup are pretty good, and it says he's a good finisher, meaning that he, he pitches well into the late innings. And that means something different in baseball than it used to. Right. If you said that 15, 20 years ago, that meant he'd be around in the ninth. Now it means he gets you to the seventh or the eighth and gives your bullpen a chance to finish it. He threw only two complete games this year. Here's his 3 1 pitch. And he loses Knobloch. Now, when you ask me about the cold weather, Bob, I would say that maybe that's affecting Millwood a little bit on those pitches, that his hand is slipping off the ball because he, he very rarely throws a ball that high. You know, two or three pitches in a row. Millwood pitching in shirt sleeves on a very chilly night. But a few goosebumps are the least of his problems. Well, after he threw the last ball to Knobloch, he went back and got the rosin back. I've always felt the most important thing to keep warm is your bat when you're going to the plate and you always try to get the bat handle warm <laughs> before you get up there. Sometimes you put your gloves there get just try to get everything as warm as you can because it's going to get cold by the time your at bat is over. Now block chase back. The Yankees may be anxious to test Greg Myers arm behind the plate. Not going. There's a strike. That was a little different pitch there. He took a lot more off of that pitch than he had been. This acts more like a changeup, but it's got movement. Jeter was way out in front, and he wisely held up. Two and one to Jeter, who's three for five so far in the World Series. Had a sharp single in the first. Block away from first with one out. And Millwood's 2 1 pitch. Through the high fastball by him, 2 and 2. Full count. Do you send him now? I think you do. I think everything's in your favor if you're Joe Torrey. He likes to hit and run. You got Jeter up there. Knobloch runs well at first base. I don't think you have a better combination on the Yankees than this combination for a hit and run situation. Knobloch stole a lot of bases over the course of the last couple of years. He goes. Jeter fans. Myers throw is bounced there. And Knobloch steals it. Well, it works out for the Yankees in one perspective in that he's still second base. Now he's in scoring position. You see it was a hit and run. Well, he knows his Jeter's going to swing if it's a strike. But the throw was way off to the left. Myers actually gets a good pitch to throw on. And he kind of throws it in the ground on the shortstop side.
So another RBI opportunity for O'Neill. Who delivered a hit on a two strike curveball from Millwood in the first. Strike one to him now. O'Neill hit 285 for the season with 19 homers and 110 RBIs. It's the first time he's hit under 300 since he's been a Yankee. He has hit as high as 359 in a season. Inside to him. Mulholland began throwing in the first. And a miss one and two and O'Neill upset with himself he knows he went way out of the strike zone this is not where Millwood wants to throw this pitch but he gets good results way up you see the target down and away and it's up and over the middle of the plate but he gets away with it this was the count when O'Neill burned him in the first this time a bouncer to the left side. Chipper Jones has time and his throw to Cusco retires O'Neill. To the bottom of the second, still 3-0 Yanks. When was the last time you felt 284 horses tugging at your soul? When was the last time you immersed yourself in hand-tufted virgin leather? Can you really put a price on this kind of perfection? Actually, you can, because this $70,000 car could cost you over $326,000 in retirement savings. We just thought you should know. Ask a financial advisor about Sun America, the retirement specialist. Imagination, are we going like one mile an hour? What's going on here? Oi, geezer! What? Our flight's in ten minutes! Well, we better hurry then, didn't we? <laughs> buckle up, boys, buckle up! Come on, oh. mate! So, let's face the facts. I'm hot, you're hot. Who wants to pet me? Crash Team Racing. Once he gets behind the wheel, things get ugly. You and me. Booyah, Grandma. Booyah. PlayStation. Folks, why settle for some teeny-weeny chicken sandwich made by Burger Boys? Take a big old body of Colonel's new Triple Crunch. Not one, not two, but three crunchy white meat strips. Well, you almost need three hands to hold it. Try my new Triple Crunch sandwich. Right now, it's just $1.99. $1.99? I could do that. I'm the Colonel. My new Triple Crunch at KFC. It's just one of five new sandwiches. What would happen if your business no longer had any excuses? You'd learn just how good your business really is. Windstar takes the friction out of your business with seamless communications and technology. Windstar, brave new business. Craig Sager back in Atlanta, where this time Kevin Millwood got a better reception from Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach. He went down and greeted him and said, that was much better, but we still have to find your groove, kid. Apparently, Millwood, as Joe pointed out, keeping the ball up too much, and he's now talking again with Leo Mazzoni. But they were much happier, as you can expect. Huh? All right, Craig, thanks. Ryan Klesko will start it in the bottom of the second. He'll be followed by Keith Lockhart and Greg Myers. Oh, 
Cohn's first pitch is a ball. This is the fifth World Series start of David Cohn's career. He's gotten no decisions in three of the first four. Although his World Series ERA is under three, so he's generally pitched well. His World Series record is 1 0. The victory came in Game 3 of the 96 World Series in Atlanta against the Braves. A gritty performance in which he bested Tom Glavin. The Yankees were down 0 2, leaving Yankee Stadium and coming south in that series, and Cohn got them back into the series. 2 1 pitch, bounce to Martinez. He shovels it over to Cohn to retire Klesko, who leaves in disgust. Our aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach, Florida at the controls pilot Jim Maloney. Not to be confused with the former Cincinnati right-hander. Jim no hit Maloney. Yeah, he threw a couple of them, didn't yeah. he? Are you sure it's not him, Bob? Yeah, I'm guessing, but <laughs> I, I figured if it was him, we'd know that. <laughs> so it's a safe guess. Here's Lockhart. Used off the bench throughout this postseason. This is his first start of the playoffs or World Series. And Cone quickly puts him in an 0 2 hole. And that's the type of curveball you want to throw. That curveball starts in the strike zone and breaks out. A lot of big league hitters can hit the curveball if it's a strike. But when you start it in the strike zone and it breaks out, that's when you go able to put them away. Lockhart is one of those guys you pull for. He spent a decade in the minors, finally made the majors at age 30. As you might guess, when a guy's last name is Lockhart, his nickname is Spider. A little pop, and Brocious at third will take it. New York fans understand that. Not necessarily baseball fans, but sports fans. The Spider is for the New York Giants defensive back who was so popular a generation ago, Spider Lockhart. That was a perfect pitching here. He starts him off with a breaking ball for a strike. Now he comes with another breaking ball. He chases it out of the strike zone. And here's the key pitch. He fouls one up. Now watch this fastball up and in. See the target? Right there. After you've set a guy up with some breaking balls away, he cannot protect the up and in fastball. So he set him up perfectly for that fastball that he finished him off with. So now with two out on the bases empty, Cohn works to the catcher Myers. 2 0. Oh. Myers started the season in San Diego. They picked him up as catching insurance after Javi Lopez went out for the season with a bad knee. Perez became the starter. Myers the backup. And Perez can play tonight. He just had a blood blister on his hand. And Bobby felt he'd give him a day off and get another left-handed bat in there. He walks on four pitches. There's Javi Lopez in uniform but inactive since midseason. And he is a special clutch hitter. I mean, he is a guy that you want at bat with the game on the line if you're the Atlanta Braves. Here's Andrew Jones, pretty dangerous number eight hitter. But in the postseason, as you see, he hasn't been terribly productive. One high. Mulholland was throwing earlier. Nobody working now in the Atlanta pen. So if Jones reaches, Millwood will bat for himself. And if you're Bobby Cox, you're probably saying, I'm going to need Kevin Millwood to pitch well in his next outing. We've got to give him a chance to find his rhythm here in this ball game. Andrew Jones lifts one back of short. Jeter takes it. And after two, Cone and the Yanks lead the Braves 3 zip. 
Yes, what will happen to all this now that you're going virtual? We're not going virtual. Well, I read you're getting into internet trading, online cash management. Well, we are, yes. <laughs> the end of an era. Not at all. Online trading and the rest of it are simply new tools we're making You don't have available. to sugarcoat it for me, but I must tell you, I'm going to miss our little chats. Nelson, I'm not going away. The office isn't going away. The coffee? The ticker? <laughs> not going away. What about the little bull? Not going away. Mm, good. If you were a new luxury car, how would you stand apart from the rest? Would you have the most powerful V6 in your class? Or the largest interior? Maybe you'd offer amenities you couldn't find anywhere else. Imagine how special you'd be if you could claim all of them. Presenting the all-new Infiniti i30. It's all the best thinking. I went on chemo at the time my oldest daughter was getting married. We had planned everything. The fabric, the design, the whole gown. But when it was time to sew the dress, the chemo, it makes you weak. My whole life I've made clothes for other people. But for my own daughter's wedding, I was too tired to make the dress. Are you a chemotherapy patient? Ask your doctor about Procrit. Procrit is a natural way to regain red blood cells lost during chemotherapy. And more red blood cells can mean more strength. Procrit is safe and effective. In studies, only diarrhea and edema occurred more often with Procrit than placebo. Procrit is for patients with non-myeloid cancers. Call now and learn how Procrit can help you get back the strength you need. Your strength for living. In life, you take the bitter with sweet. But I plan to end up with more sweet. NBC Monday. Oh my God. A co-ed murdered. We could be looking at two attackers. Superstar athletes accused. A secret tradition exposed. Hostesses offer hospitality. Angie Harmon guest stars. What did they call it? Before the terms date, rape, and sexual harassment. Boys will be boys. All new Law & Order Special Victims Unit NBC Monday. As you can see there, Kevin Millwood has thrown a lot of pitches tonight, but he's thrown a lot of innings this year. Bobby threw 174 innings last year. He's well over 250, counting tonight. He's at 252. And at one, some point, young pitchers hit the wall. And I'm not so sure Kevin Millwood hasn't hit the wall here around 250. I mean, it's tough to build up your arm strength to that point. Strike one to Bernie Williams as we start the third. Well, prior to his start in game six of the league championship series, where he couldn't hold a big lead against the Mets, Millwood had allowed two earned runs or less in his previous 12 starts dating back to early August. But based on what we've seen so far this could be his second consecutive poor outing in a row. Well he just doesn't have the same velocity and movement on his fastball and he definitely doesn't have the same control. would fit into the category by the way of a repetitive redundancy it's his second consecutive bad outing in a row just wanted to hammer home the point but I knew what you meant anyway thanks and his 1 1 pitch to Bernie Williams is in there Bernie hit into a double play that gave Millwood a chance to get out of the first with only one run scoring. But then Martinez delivered an RBI hit. Lede walked, and Scott Brocious singled home another run. High fastball, another fastball, and a three third fastball that he gave up to Brocious. In between, Tino Martinez and Paul O'Neill both hit breaking balls back through the middle for base hit. So he just was not able to finish the hitters off after he had two strikes on them in the first inning. Hit sharply, diving his Lockhart, can't come up with it. A base hit for Bernie Williams to start the Yankee third. When you get a hitter with two strikes, a lot of times you can make him become a defensive hitter. That's not happening to the Yankees here. High fastball again out over the middle of the plate. Not exactly where he wants to throw it, and Bernie just drills it back through the middle. Nice attempt there at second base by Lockhart, but it goes on into center field for a base hit. If you're going to pitch up in the strike zone, you better have some good movement on your fastball up there. A 
one called strike to Tino Martinez. The Yankees had six hits in game one. They have six hits tonight. All of them singles. And five of those six hits have come off of, you know, with two strikes. But again, that's a sign of a good hitting ball club and a smart hitting team. The fact that none of these hits have been for extra bases is no consolation at all to Bobby Cox and the Braves. He is managing his 100th postseason game tonight. Of course, it's a different game. A guy like Casey Stengel, who took the Yankees to the World Series year after year, only had the World Series. Cox has had the LCS dating back to his days in Toronto, and the Division Series added to it since the mid-90s. But Division Series, LCS, World Series combined, 100 postseason games managed. He has managed more one-run postseason games than Joe Torre has managed total postseason games. Williams has to dive back. Not going on the 2-1 pitch, which is laced to left. Coming on, Williams dives, and he can't get it. Williams stops at second. Potentially dangerous play had it gotten by him, but he was able to keep it in front of him. It's another line drive off of Millwood, and this one goes to left field. Gerald Williams gets a good start on it. Comes in, he makes a dive. And he kind of rolls over it right when he goes into his glove. Watch. Goes right into the web right there, and he rolls over it, and he can't hold it. He thought he had made the catch momentarily. So it goes as New York's seventh hit of the night. Up steps Lede, who had a walk in the first. Strike one to him. Well, if you're the Braves, you're at a point where if he gives up any more runs, you probably have to pinch hit for him in the bottom half of the inning. He's due to lead off when the Braves hit. And Lede drives one to left center field. Williams and Jones in pursuit. It splits them and goes to the wall. One run home. And that's all that will score on this play. Bernie Williams comes across. Martinez is stopped at third. On the double by Ricky Lede with nobody out. And Martinez, not the fastest runner in the world, Willie Randolph decides to stop him. And Bobby Cox decides to stop Millwood's night. High breaking ball from Millwood, and the day goes the other way. And the one thing you should notice that these Yankee hitters are not trying to pull the ball. None of them. I mean, they're just going back through the middle and the other way, which shows their experience. And I mean, they're just good hitters. Good relay back in. Holds the Yankees to one run. You see Lede pretty pleased with his accomplishment there. New York's first extra base hit of the series finishes Millwood. Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm calling long distance with one of those 10-10 numbers. Makes you crazy. Oh, it's crazy. It's nuts. It'll make you nuts. But with the new AT&T one rate seven cent plan, calls are just seven cents a minute. Yeah, but you can only call at certain times, right? Seven cents a minute all day, every day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week? That's simple. Yes, it is. So I don't have to use those 10-10 numbers ever again? No, you don't. <laughs> All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. Excuse me, but what are you doing? As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity. The first site with trading tools customized by Lycos. To fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up. Or, in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit Fidelity.com to open an account. 
This is how hundreds of thousands of smokers have quit. It's the gradual step-down method, and you get it only from Nicoderm CQ. Store brand patches have only one step. You can't step down your dose. Nicoderm CQ has three. You step down gradually, and gradual is the method doctors prefer. Quitting's important. Choose carefully. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Hello, I'm Mark John Jeffries, and I'm here to talk with you about People PC. It's simple. One, a new brand name PC replaced every three years. Two, unlimited internet. Three, in-home service. Yep, if all else fails, they come to you. Four, great deals on stuff you like from places you know. All for $24.95 a month. That's it. As the new year approaches, we're starting to see some problems. Six, five, four. One thing's on everyone's mind. Three, two, Everybody out! Five. Oh my God. What if they're right? Y2K, NBC, November 21st. Four nothing Yankees, and what a terrible time from Atlanta's perspective for Millwood to have the shortest outing of his season. In comes the veteran Mulholland to face Brocious. He moves him away with ball one. And the infield is playing in at least halfway. They're moving back and forth. And I agree, you cannot let the Yankees score another run easily here in the third inning. Considering the slumbering Atlanta bats and the quality of Yankee pitching, a base hit here could just about put Atlanta away. It's already 4 0. Broch has had an RBI hit in the first. Mulholland got in on him. A ball and two strikes. Terry Mulholland just into the game is 36 years old. Well traveled. Was with the Phillies when they went to the World Series against the Blue Jays in 93. Appeared in two games and won one of them. And he fans Brocious. Folks, you can go online to msnbcsports.com for more World Series coverage from NBC. An in-game webcast features continuously updated analysis from the Reds' Barry Larkin, who also answers your email during the game. Plus, check out an exclusive web video segment where Barry looks ahead to the keys for Game 3 on Tuesday night in New York. msnbcsports.com, the official website of NBC Sports. Here's Girardi, who struck out to end the three-run Yankee first. Ball one high. It's an interesting situation if you're Mulholland to pitch to Girardi because you can't ever discount totally a squeeze play here in this situation from the Yankees because David Cohn is on deck. It's interesting because the Braves could gamble here, walk Girardi, Count on Mulholland to strike Cone out and maybe get out of the inning. The pitch out. They wanted to see if something was on and it wasn't. And, and that may be their game plan here. You might see another pitch out. Girardi is an exceptionally good butter for a catcher. He's ahead on the count 2 and 0. 3 and 0. Martinez at third. Lede who doubled at second. And Willie Randolph giving him his instructions as if to say we're not nothing's on right here. Now Girardi asked again for the signs. Willie Randolph the Yankees third base coach 
might be managing somewhere next year. Milwaukee said to be interested in him, possibly the Angels as well. The 3 0 pitch. First, Mulholland wheels around. Nobody was covering. Girardi takes a strike. I'm assuming that Bobby Cox just feels like he'd rather pitch to, to Girardi and try to get him out rather than walk him and then even strike Cone out and have to pitch to Knobloch. 3-1 pitch chopped foul. Three one pitch the sinker, good sinker there from Mulholland. And Chipper Jones in foul territory. A lot of talking going on between Willie Randolph and Martinez at third. The three two pitch a broken bat slow roller Guillen's got it the runners will hold and Girardi is out. The barrel of the bat flies all the way out to the outfield grass. This is what you call really getting sawed off that was a pitch in on his hands Guillen charged it quickly. And he threw Girardi out at first base. Now, I mean, this ball's way in on his hands. Look at that. I mean, it shatters the handle of the bat. How does that feel to a hitter on a night like this? <laughs> Cone trying to help himself slices one foul. Those bees must be buzzing in Girardi's hands right now. <laughs> when your hands are cold and you shatter the bat. I mean, it, it may take you two or three innings before you're over that feeling. One and one. Cone grounded a first, his first time up. Well, he's making contact. One and two. This is what you call a very bad night at a very bad time. The disconsolate Millwood watches from the bench as Mulholland tries to put an end to it. And Cone continues to battle it. You can tell Mulholland's been around a while. Flecks of gray in his beard. <laughs> Check swing foul, still one and two. If Mo Holland can retire Cone, I mean, the Braves are still in pretty good shape. They'll have seven innings in which to make up a four run deficit. Well, David Cone was saying before the World Series, I'm a pretty good hitter now. I'm happy to get the call in a National League city where there's no DH. Another one two pitch. He hits it on a line to Guillen who drops it. Drop the ball. And it's a five nothing game. Martinez scores Lede to third. It should have ended the inning. And instead, it just gets worse for the Braves. Well, Cone gets jammed, and this ball slices the shortstop. Looked like it hit off the tip of his glove. I don't see. He's got his glove out front. It hits right off the tip of his glove. He was never sure of it because you could see him put his bare hand in there. The shot of Bobby Cox says everything you need to know. Al says David Cohn as the pitch was in on his fist, but a far greater pain is felt in the Atlanta dugout. Here's Knobloch. 
taking a strike. Ozzie Guillen won a gold glove as the White Sox shortstop back in 1990. He's not a bad fielder. Walt Weiss had started most of the games of the postseason prior to tonight. Out of play, 0 and 2. So Mulholland comes in, strikes out Brocious, gets Girardi on a broken bat roller, and should have been out of the inning. But Guillen somehow mishandles a soft line drive. Now the 0 2. Right, when the ball is above your waist, you usually backhand the ball. He appeared to try to get his glove, you know, underneath it with his palm up, and it looked like it hit right off the end of his glove, his fingers. A called strike three. Mulholland did well. Ian didn't help him. 5 nothing, New York. Just a good old boy. Never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw. Been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Making their way. That's just a little bit more than the noble life. There is a prison from which it is all but impossible to escape. Because every day that we choose to consume instead of save, we let something slip away. Investing is not just about stocks or bonds or annuities. It's about freedom. Well, it rained. A state of emergency has washed away roads. For three straight days it rained. A series of storms coming. Then the levee broke. Four-foot wave washed through town, tore everything up. A whole lot of people lost everything. Everything they had. Another problem was we had all this water. But you couldn't drink a drop of it. That's when the truck from Miller rolled up. I see it and I'm thinking beer. Beer? Beer. But it was water. They stopped bottling beer. They stopped bottling beer and bottled water for us instead. Miller, part of the Philip Morris family of companies, donated thousands of gallons of drinking water to disaster victims last year. For decades, Philip Morris has assisted communities in distress all around the world. Actually, I could have used a beer right then. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. Working to make a difference. The people of Philip Morris. He looks just like the guy next door, but he can drive a stock car faster than anyone. Go nose to tail at 200 miles an hour. Dive for the lead with inches separating success from disaster. Jeff Gordon, a real American hero, coming to NBC, the NASCAR Pennzoil 400. Well, you can see the temperature is 46 degrees and the wind chill is 34 degrees. And a lot of times that does affect play. And, but this play here with Oz again, I think he just got his glove caught in the wrong position. You can see he's having trouble with it by the fact that he's pulling his glove back to his body. Normally you just reach out and backhand that ball, but it was there was something in the flight of the ball that was bothering him all the way, and he didn't feel like he had it under control. Mulholland bats for himself, a career 105 hitter. For Atlanta, the cold facts of the situation are much more troublesome than the cold temperatures. Trailing five to nothing against a team on a tremendous postseason roll. The Yankees were the favorites in the minds of objective observers coming into the series. They're on the verge of taking a two nothing lead back to New York. Now, of course, the reverse was true in 96. And the Braves crushed the Yankees in the first two games at Yankee Stadium before the Yankees came here and somehow won three in a row. So it can be done. 
but it's just not the situation you want to find yourself in. Well, tonight's ball game, the Braves have to hope that Mulholland can just hold the Yankees for two or three innings where they can try to make a dent into this five to nothing lead. They have the ability to come back because they do have some guys on the ball park, ball club that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Full count. And remember, you know, Cone is not a pitcher you expect to go nine innings. And if you can get him in a couple of jams where he has to throw a lot of pitches in the first four or five, you'll have a shot at him before they can get to the bullpen. And all you want to do is close the gap. When you reach the seventh inning, you want to be able to at least have it under control where one swing can get you back in the game. Well, Mulholland works a walk. Torrey has fashioned his own protection <laughs> against the nippy conditions with a towel underneath his windbreaker. But meanwhile, down at first base, Mulholland says, I don't need the jacket. I'm just fine like this. Everyone says left-handers are a little different. Gerald Williams takes a strike. The Braves still don't have a hit in this game. They have two walks. And Gian reached on Cohn's error in the first. In fact, the Braves have two hits in the series so far. And here's a soft fly ball and a shallow right. Paul O'Neill takes it. If you're down as the Braves are, they find themselves on a different situation like they were against the Mets. You try to break the game down into thirds so that by the time these middle innings come around, you put a couple of numbers on the board. When you get to the late innings here, you have to be able to tie the ball game with one swing. You can't expect to try to get five or six, especially against the Yankee bullpen after the seventh inning. But you just want to get it where you can have a manageable situation where one swing of the bat can get you back in the ball game. Ian rolls it foul. Trying to do something to make up for his error in the top half of the inning. That number 13 was unlucky for him tonight. He wears it in honor of his fellow Venezuelan shortstop Dave Concepcion, your old teammate with the big red machine. And he made 13 work, <laughs> and Ozzy has made it work most of his career. Quickly 0 2. And Bob, I must say it was an honor for me to have two of my teammates on the all-century team, guys that I played with, and helped me to get, you know, work my way into the Hall of Fame. Two great players, Pete Rose and Johnny Bench. How did you feel about the reception accorded Rose? I... That floats outside, one and two. Well, I, th I thought it was great because Pete has been away from the game so long, and I think the fans who are true baseball fans miss him. Chipper Jones will be next. Two and two. There's Chipper, whose fourth inning homer off El Duque last night represents all the offense the Braves have mustered so far in this World Series. Fouled off. Still two and two. After last night, El Duque is 5-0 as a postseason pitcher. Maddox, the four-time Cy Young Award winner with the defeat, goes to 500, 10-10 in the playoffs and World Series. Guillen punches it toward Jeter. Steps on the bag for one and completes the double play. A nightmare inning for Ozzie Guillen. Error in the top half. DP to end the bottom half. 
A forbidden love leads to an epic battle. Randy Quaid and Whoopi Goldberg lead an all-star cast. Leprechauns, NBC Sunday in two weeks. Alone on a desolate road. A runner searches for her soul, her spirit, and her sneakers. Seems our distribution plans didn't anticipate a foreign crisis. Who could have helped? Aeon, ensure your vision. Test Drive 2000. A bold styling and driving statement. A world-class, no-compromise sports sedan and a marvelous bargain to boot. It's all systems go at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Right now, compare the world-class Maxima 2000 to the competition. Drive them all at one time in one place and see for yourself. Take the Test Drive Challenge today and experience Maxima 2000. There's simply no other car like it. Test Drive 2000. Now at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Hey, you need money to put a kid through college, to pay off your gambling debt, or whatever, huh? If you need cash, get it at my website. No problems, no hassles, and no questions asked loans. Dot com. These days, you can buy anything on the web. But who are you buying it from? At vitaminshop.com, you get 18,000 products, 400 brands, and over 20 years' experience you can trust. Vitaminshop.com. How healthy do you want to be? As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit fidelity.com to open an account. Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. With the exception of the battery of Girardi and Cohn, everybody in the Yankee lineup has at least one hit and Martinez has a couple. Mel Stottlemyre, Yankee pitching coach. He and David Cohn obviously happy with the way things are going. Roger Clemens, the game four starter, says that's right. Just keep doing what you're doing. Whatever it is, seems to be working just fine. Bob, this game is really a lot of fun when you're winning. <laughs> and a strike call to Derek Jeter as we begin the top of the fourth. Millwood's performance tonight notwithstanding, you could probably make a case that looking at the eight pitchers who will start the first four games of this series, that there may never have been a World Series with this kind of depth of quality starting pitching. You've got 13 Cy Young Awards. Five for Clemens, four for Maddox, two for Glavitt, one each for Cohn and Smoltz. El Duque might have won one had he come to the Major League sooner. He may win one yet. That's a very good point because, I mean, these two pitching staffs are excellent, have excellent starters. Hit in the air to left center field. This one's bound for the gap. Gerald Williams cuts it off. Jeter sprints for second, and he's in there ahead of the throw. He had two hits last night. He's two for three tonight. Bob, earlier this year I was watching A-Rod in Seattle, and I just said to myself, how good can this guy be? And now I'm watching Jeter and thinking the same thing. I mean, he just seems to get better each and every at bat. Forget about getting better each game. I mean, every at bat, he seems to have a better idea about what he wants to do as he just rips this ball up the gap in left center field. And very rarely does he hit balls at people. When he hits it hard, it's a base hit. O'Neill is singled and grounded out. Called strike one. To continue the thought on the pitching, the game three pairing. Two left-handers, Andy Pettit against Tom Glavin. Glavin came to the park and threw a little bit today, then went home to continue his recuperation from the stomach virus. They do expect him to be ready Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. When this that first happened, I thought it could have been, you know, a blessing for the Atlanta Braves in that 
Glavin would start game three in Yankee Stadium where left handers fare better than maybe they do here in this ballpark and especially against the Yankees and that would also allow him to pitch game seven if it goes seven. So I, I thought well that might help the Braves because you know the, they're interchangeable anyway Maddox starting yesterday Glavin starting and not a big difference between the two. I mean they're both excellent pitchers. But unless they win this ball game, it's going to be very difficult to get to game seven. One two pitch a drive to right center field. Andrew Jones glides over has it lined up Jeter tags heads for third and he's in there. That's basically again Yankee baseball. I mean you say well Paul O'Neill made it out but it's a productive out. It moves Derek Jeter to third base with less than two outs. And yet, if you're the Yankees and you have a five nothing lead all you want to do is add one here one there. And you know that you will be able to hold on to the to the lead. Andrew Jones makes a good throw but Derek Jeter got a good jump and slides into third base easily. They're going to put Bernie Williams on and let Mulholland work to the left hand hitting Tino Martinez. Here's more bad news for the Braves with the exception of game three of the ALCS where Roger Clemens was knocked out early and they lost 13 to one at Fenway Park against Pedro Martinez with the exception of that one game no Yankee starter has allowed more than two earned runs in any postseason game this year. They're eight and one in the playoffs and World Series. They've allowed ten runs total in their eight victories 13 in their one loss. at the corners one out infield looks for the double play and ball one to Tino Martinez and Tino's not really a, a ground ball hitter he hits a lot of fly balls and line drives he gets underneath the ball Mulholland maybe with a good sinker can get him to hit one on the ground he does to Guillen plays it cleanly to lock When it stuck in his glove it allowed Bernie Williams to get to him and jostle him a bit and everything is unraveling for the Atlanta Braves. Well good job by Mulholland to get the ground ball because like I say Tino doesn't hit a lot of ground balls. But he gets the ground ball right near the bag which is where you want it. The throw a little bit behind him. In truth. Williams did not get there in time. I thought he had but Lockhart released the throw before Williams got there and simply threw it away. So Cox goes with a new middle infield and they each contribute to this six nothing deficit. Well what was happening is Joe Torrey was arguing that Lockhart never touched the bag but he did throw the ball in his motion to throw the ball to first base his back foot his right foot did drag the bag. He will straddle a bag to start with when he accepted the throw from Guillen. But as he threw the ball to first base, started his motion, his back foot, actually he dragged it right across the bag. Martinez didn't advance beyond first, and you can't assume the double play from the standpoint of the official scoring. So Lockhart is not charged with an error, but this should have been an inning ending double play. You can see he is not touching the bag there, but watch his right foot. So he still has the ball right there. His right foot is on the bag. And that's what the umpire saw. But Joe Torre saw him straddling the bag when he made the catch and he did not think that he had touched the bag when he threw the ball to first base. Lockhart hasn't played much in the field of late. Bounced foul it's 0 and 2. Last night. There's Brett Boone the sure handed regular second baseman. Last night Bobby Cox took Ryan Klesko out for defense brought Brian Hunter in to start the eighth. It's the right move Hunter's a very good glove man. He makes two errors in the inning. Bob the last two runs the Yankees have scored have been on you know brave errors a drop pop up there from Ozzie Guillen and now a botched double play. 
But you're right, they're not going to give him an error, but it's still an error in my mind. Lede strikes out, but more damage is done. 6 nothing, New York. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit fidelity.com to open an account. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only where you see this sign. What does this guy have to say that threatens these people? Well, it isn't cigarettes are bad for you. He's only the key witness in the biggest health reform issue in U.S. history. He met an insider who was ready to reveal what no one else could tell. I was told, don't talk. Al Pacino. The more truth he tells, the worse it gets. Russell Crowe. I told the truth. It's not the point whether you tell the truth or not. The Insider, a Michael Mann film, rated R. Starts Friday, November 5th. Between every milestone are moments we share together. Now at McDonald's, we're saluting the Walt Disney World Millennium Celebration. Commemorate this momentous event with four special edition sculpted glasses. Where can you start celebrating the millennium? We know advanced technology doesn't have to be complicated. That every product must be meaningful. And the end result will make you smile. Open up to Samsung Digital and keep in touch. Samsung Digital. Everyone's invited. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by MasterCard. MasterCard, proud sponsor of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. By Merrill Lynch. There's a new way to work with Merrill Lynch any way you want and by Keystone Light, America's never bitter beer. Another view from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. Goodyear currently maintains a fleet of seven blimps, three domestic and four international operations. Just in case you need to rent or lease a blimp for your party or function, they have seven of them. To the bottom of the fourth, the Braves trail 6-0. They're still hitless. The largest lead the Yankees have blown in any game this year is five runs. Ball one to Chipper Jones. Way outside and high, 2-0. Three balls and no strikes. Ryan Jordan on deck and then Ryan Klesko. That one's in there. With a six run lead, David Cohn's main focus is just to try to keep the ball out of the middle of the plate, but throw strikes. That's the third walk he's given up. Folks, now that the All-Century team has been selected, Major League Baseball and MasterCard want you, the fans, to name the starting lineup. Just log on to MajorLeagueBaseball.com, the official postseason site of Major League Baseball, to vote for your starting lineup. The fan starting lineup will be announced during Game 4 of the World Series here on NBC. Jordan swings on the first one, lifts it into right center field. O'Neill waves Williams off and takes it. So Jordan, who had driven Lede to the wall and left his first time up, flies to O'Neill and right here in the fourth. That pitch was a little bit out of his zone. 
Watch this pitch is up and in a little bit. He gets a little late on it. See, he's late on it. You can see him just trying to get the barrel of the bat through. And he doesn't get to it. Klesko grounded to first in the second. He hit 21 home runs during the regular year. One in the playoffs at Shea Stadium against the Mets during the LCS. He had three home runs in the 1995 World Series for the Braves against the Indians. 0-2. One of the adjustments El Duque made against Klesko last night was that he kept firing the fastball in on him. He jammed him three times. Klesko had hit two home runs off of him earlier this year when they played at Yankee Stadium off of two breaking balls. So he went just the opposite and everything was hard in on Klesko. And he was very successful last night. Ball one, even though Chipper Jones, the runner at first, is very speedy with a 6 nothing lead. Tino Martinez is playing behind him, as you might expect. Called strike three. Klesko turns away. That's the breaking ball that you give up on if you're a left-handed hitter. Watch, it starts off the plate outside. This is what you call a backdoor breaking ball. See, it starts off the plate outside and comes back over the outside part of the plate. Watch where his glove is. He starts to reach out to get it, and then it breaks right back over the outside corner. Good job there by David Cohn. Who registers his first strikeout of the night. And that pitch was set up because they'd thrown a couple of fastballs in tight on him. Let's go looking for the ball inside. One and one to Lockhart, who popped to third in the second inning. The Braves have drawn three walks. Cohen has made an error. They still have no hits. Well, it took him a while to decide, but they checked down at third, and Jerry Davis says, yeah, he went around. Well, we'll take a look again. Just watch the barrel of the bat. And that's what the third base umpire sees, is that the barrel of the bat goes a little bit too far. Take a look. Yes. The one-two, up and in. Working rather quickly, his 2-2 pitch runs the count out full. And he was trying that backdoor breaking ball again on Lockhart as he did with Klesko. This ball starts off the plate and then you give up on it if you're a left-handed hitter. And that one doesn't quite come back far enough. Hit to second, Knobloch's got it. His flip to Martinez retires Lockhart. Four in the books, game two of the World Series. Yankees looking for a 2-0 advantage. Small business software, $400. Letterhead, $610. Office supplies, $90. Remembering who you work for, priceless. MasterCard Business Bonuses lets you earn miles good on any airline, no blackouts. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. has been a wall between you and the tools of serious trading. That wall is coming down. Daytech Online. The information and technology professionals use to trade is now available to everyone.
Daytech Online. The rules are changing. The good thing about hurricanes is you can usually see them coming so we can get there ahead of time. Tornadoes, earthquakes, you don't know about until they've happened. The idea is the more of us at the scene, the quicker we can take care of our customers. When I first took this assignment, I thought I'd do it for a year. That was all 10 years ago. You're in good hands with Allstate. Mine. From the executive producer of ER, two of this year's biggest hits, two powerful nights of television. I got him. Wednesday's The West Wing. It's my first bombing. I don't know yet. And Sunday's Third Watch, two great shows. You weren't the target. Who was? Your daughter. The West Wing Wednesdays and Third Watch Sundays, only on NBC. From West Wing, Richard Schiff. From Third Watch, Bobby Cannavale and Eddie Cibrian. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Looks like, looks like they're Yankee fans, huh? Either that or front runners. <laughs> they go to the concession stand after someone establishes a lead. Brocious, Girardi, and Cohn in the New York fifth. Six runs, nine hits, and an error for the Yankees. 0-0-1 for Atlanta. Brocious sounded like he broke his bat. A little bloop down the right field line. It's in there for a hit. He wants two. Jordan pegs it to second, and Brocious is safe. Well, he hit one right off the end of the bat, and it just shatters the bat. Mulholland must think he's just having bad luck tonight. Right off the end of the bat, shatters it, and the ball bounces and stays fair. By the time Jordan comes up with it, look at that, right off the end. And Brocious is running saying, stay fair, stay fair. And he hustles into second base with a double. Maintaining his World Series career average at over 500. Girardi's 0 for 2. Looks to bunt. Gets it down. Mulholland grabs it and waits for Girardi and then tags him. Brocious to third with one out. This is interesting to sacrifice ahead of the pitcher's spot. Right. I, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Girardi, pretty good hitter, but he pushes it to the right side. Nice play there by Mulholland to get it before it bounces. And he tags Girardi out. Cohen but again, I think Joe is just trying to make sure he adds one each inning, Bob, so that you never give the Braves a, a thought that they can come back in this game. The infield moves in. Cohn must have Torrey convinced that he truly can hit. And if you try to squeeze here and the Braves are alert to it, it's very easy to pitch out to the runner side. He bloops it and Guillen makes sure this time. And some mock cheers from the Atlanta crowd. Tough crowd. Well, David Cohn said it worked the last time. I'll try it again. Oz again. Usually very sure-handed, but see, backhands this one and makes the catch. This is the time before. See how he tries to catch it with his glove facing up. There's the double play they tried to complete, and Jeter came in to score. They have given the Yankees some help in this ball game. That they have. Here's Knobloch, who singled. Walked, stolen a base, and struck out. Roche is at third with two out. One and one to the Yankee second baseman. As most of you know, the five on the sleeves of the Yankee uniforms is in memory of Joe DiMaggio. Who passed away this spring. Yeah. 
two and one. The black stripe beneath the number five is in memory of Catfish Hunter. The Yankees lost Joe D and Catfish Hunter this year. Yogi Berra returned to Yankee Stadium during the same season. Another base hit for Knobloch, another run for New York, 7 0. For all of his defensive problems the last month and a half, Chuck Knobloch has really been swinging the bat well. He's raised his average up to close to 300 at the end of the regular season, and he continues here in the playoffs and the World Series. He rips a base hit to left field, a good two out hit. And the Yankees have been doing that in this ballgame, producing two out base hits to drive in runs. Mulholland to Jeter. Derek is singled, struck out, and doubled. It may be grasping at straws, but remember, not only did the Braves win the first two games at Yankee Stadium in 1996, I think the scores were 12 to 1 and 4 to nothing. Exactly. So they appear just as dominant as the Yankees do now. Roll to Lockhart. He flips it to Guillen, and they're out of the fifth, but not before the Yankees tack on another run. They've scored in four of the five frames in which they've hit. Mini, 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 oh. <laughs> this Christmas, everything, yes, everything, is getting blown up. From Trimount Studios comes the $200 million event of the year. Blow up. Oh, my. This movie's gonna blow. A Michael Harbour film, a Trimount Studios production. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. To build the new LeSabre, we didn't just look to research numbers or test scores. We also took a good look at your family. Introducing the all-new 2000 LeSabre, re-engineered with more safety features than any other car in its class. 2000 LeSabre by Buick. Oh, don't even ask. Just get me loose. Whoa, a constrictor knot with a midshipman's hitch. What? That's quality work. Out of train! Hurry! That's the problem these days. Everybody's rushing. Constrictor knot with a midshipman's hitch. <sighs> There's just no stopping a frost brewed Coors Light. An all new Dateline Monday. A troubled man who fought to get mental help commits an unthinkable crime against this woman. How could the system let this happen? An all new Dateline Investigation Monday. Are you ready for NBA 2000? This is the last out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Keith Lockhart grounds it to Chuck Knobloch. Now watch it. Normally you pick up the target as quick as you can. He looks away, takes a few steps. Now he finds the target and throws to first base. Now look, see, he's not even looking at his target. Now he finds it and throws to first base. That is some kind of way of helping him to focus. And you see here, this is him in infield practice before the ball game. He throws the ball hard. A little erratic at times, but at least he's releasing the ball. And during the game, we see him kind of lobbing across the first base. But those practice throws look pretty ugly, didn't they? <laughs> he's got, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, and maybe just the off days in the winter, maybe everything will straighten itself out because 
obviously it's, it's mental because Joe Torre says he doesn't have a sore arm. His arm is fine, so it has to be mental. And it's just something he'll have to work out. A ball and a strike to Greg Myers leading off in the bottom of the fifth. Remember, Chuck Knobloch won a gold glove as recently as 1997. Myers, Andrew Jones, and then likely a pinch hitter here in the fifth. A liner, and there's their first base hit. Well, David Cohn had a no-hitter going until this inning. And Myers hits it right back through the middle for a base hit. And it gives the Braves a start here in the fifth inning. It also makes them overall three for 41 in the series as a team. Andrew Jones steps in. Taking a ball George Fabregas their third catcher is in the on deck circle as a pinch hitter. So he'll bat for Mulholland. Two and out of Jones. Russ Springer apparently will be the next Atlanta pitcher. Bob, you mentioned the Braves are three for 41. You can't keep that kind of pressure on your starting pitching staff. You can't expect them to go out and pitch a one to nothing game every every time out. So you put a lot of pressure on your starters. If the Braves are going to win this World Series, they're going to have to score some runs. Because I don't think anyone's going to shut the Yankees down completely. Called strike three and one. Full count. Cone's control has not been razor sharp. He's walked three. Tabrocious. Not blocked for one. Is his relay true? It is for the double play. And that's when he's at his best. He just gets the ball and releases it in second base. This is a tough turn. He makes a good play here at second base. Watch, he throws the ball right where he gets it from. Now, Brocia starts it. He throws it. Watch, the throws a little low. He reaches down, catches it down there, and fires from down there. I mean, that's a nice play there. Nice turn at second base by Nabla. You'd rather have the ball about shoulder high, but he gets it low. But you see what he does. He turns it from down below, fires to first base for a double play. His problems are when he has time to think about the throw. There he just has to react. And he usually does a good job when he, when he has to make the double play on that type of situation. Fabregas takes a ball. So there was a bit of hope here in this inning for Atlanta. Myers leads off with a single. The count goes to 3 0 on Andrew Jones, but just as quickly, those hopes are dashed on the 5 4 3 double play. Fabregas spent most of the year with the Marlins. He had only eight regular season at bats as a Brave. He had 199 for the season with three home runs. Two and one. Count levels at two and two. It doesn't figure to get any easier for Atlanta. Barring a huge comeback here. They go to New York down 0 2 and then have to face Andy Pettit who's thrown very well of late. Of course they'll have Tom Glavin set to go. And he's no slouch himself. Fabregas strikes out. Second strikeout of the night for Cole through five. Seven nothing New York. 
Do rich people deserve more space than the rest of us? Was technology meant to improve their lives alone? Do the stars shine for their eyes only? Introducing the special edition Century 2000. With so many unexpected amenities for an unexpected price, it's the first limited edition that isn't limited to the rich. The new Century 2000 by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. Yeah, let me get this straight. Yes. Are you actually saying I don't have to pay you a separate commission every time I trade a stock? Exactly. I, I'd pay an annual fee instead. Right. Is, is anyone getting this? If we this? don't pay you a commission every time we trade, what's your motivation? It's just like always in your best interest. <laughs> Could you just explain it again? Maybe what it is is the fee is based on the value of our portfolios. So when we succeed, they succeed. Well, you'll, you'll have to be patient with us. This is all very new. <laughs> Attention, please. It is exactly 50 seconds to midnight. We're almost there. Get ready. This November, the biggest movie events are coming to NBC with the untold story seen through her eyes. Mary, Mother of Jesus. What if they're right? Y2K the movie. The network television premiere, Men in Black. And Sunday in two weeks, the magical legend of the Leprechauns. This November, the biggest movie events are on NBC. We're going to show you why the Yankees are such a good team. Here's a ground ball of short, and a Knobloch makes the play when he has to. He comes across the bag. Gets rid of the ball. That's not an easy turn right there, but he gets it done. Now, when he goes into the dugout, his teammates are all there to congratulate him. Nice job. Good job. I mean, they're all in it together. I mean, this is a close-knit team, and they're always trying to pump each other up. Look at that. I mean, every guy comes over and basically says, nice job, Chuck. And that has to help you. I mean, when you're struggling, whether it's as a hitter or as a defensive player, player when you're having problems they're always going to be there for you. Russ Springer who began his career in the early 90s with the Yankees is the new Atlanta pitcher. The Braves are his sixth major league team. He was two and one this year with an ERA of about three and a half. And as you see he's thrown well in the postseason. Here's his 0 1 pitch to Paul O'Neill. Popped out a play. Let's go to Jim Gray. Jim. Well, Bob, Joe Torre must not think seven runs is enough. He's telling all of his guys, Joe Girardi, who just left, and Tino Martinez, guys, we need some more runs. Let's grind it. Let's keep after it. Bob? Interestingly, this is the first time that Joe's team has begun any postseason series, division, LCS, or World Series, on the road. But the one thing you do, I think Joe feels that seven runs or enough runs but what he wants to do is keep his team playing the game you do not want to sit on this and then try to start it up again on Tuesday in New York just keep playing the game the way it's supposed to be played I think that's what he's trying to do two and two although this is not a close game at seven nothing and so late inning defensive replacements are less of a question remember that Luis Soho is still not with the club the Yankees are playing with 24 men Soho is in Venezuela his father passed away a few days ago a fly ball to left Gerald Williams lopes over and that's the first out in the sixth Torrey had said that he would use Soho as a late inning defensive replacement but with Soho gone 
he wouldn't use the youngster Clay Bellinger or scramble his infield in any other way. It's Knobloch all the way until Soho returns. And the way he is playing, at least he's, you know, staying in the ball game. I'm not so sure that Joe will do it at all now. I mean, he's you, you've, you've got a player here who's going to be with you for the next three or four years. You want to build his confidence back up. Bernie Williams finds the hole by the diving Lockhart. It's his second hit of the night. Tino Martinez has had a two-out base hit to center field, a drive and a run his first at bat. Then he hit a line drive that Juro Williams almost comes up with, and he hit the ground ball. It should have been a double play. They didn't turn it, and so he gets an RBI on that ground ball as well. So he's two for three with a pair of runs driven home. And he takes ball one. Looking back at that play where they botched the potential double play, not only has Lockhart not played much in the field of late, but I would guess that Guillen and Lockhart haven't been on the field at the same time very much at all. Does that matter? Yes, it makes a big difference. I mean, there's a certain continuity that you have to have between the second baseman and the shortstop. And actually, Guillen's throw was a little bit behind Lockhart. Normally, if you're working with a second baseman, he'll be able to make up that for that problem that you just started. But Lockhart hasn't played a lot, and he wasn't able to overcome the, the bad throw. That one's in there one and two to Tino Martinez. There's Brett Boone who's in my opinion maybe the best at making the double play in the National League. He gets with the raw very quickly. Back to Springer. Looks at second, throws it low, Guillen digs it out, but they don't get the double play that seemed a certainty when the ball was first hit. I'm not sure the Braves can play any worse than they're playing tonight. This, and maybe that's, that's a good sign. They're going to get it all out at once. This is a perfect double play ball. One hop back to Springer, and he throws it in the ground. Guillen tries to make up for his poor throw, but he's off balance, and he throws it away at first base. So that prolongs the inning and brings up Ricky Lede. And this is definitely not a typical Atlanta type ball game. But you want to like a lot of teammates will tell you let's get it all out of here at once. Let's make sure that we have all our bad throws all our bad feeling plays in this one game and we'll start over on Tuesday and go from there. Well if they need to bottom out before that can happen they're coming close tonight. Leo Mazzoni seeming to nod in agreement. Two and one. There's no animosity between these teams. There's no. none of the uh, the undercurrent of resentment that might have been part of earlier series around baseball. Bobby Cox and Joe Torre each have connections to the other organization. That's out of play. Torre, of course, was an excellent player for the Milwaukee and Atlanta Braves, later managed the Atlanta Braves. Bobby Cox came up as a player in the late 1960s with the Yankees. His rookie year was Mickey Mantle's final year as an active player. Later he managed in the minors in the Yankee chain and coached for them in 1977 with the big club. Torrey and Cox have high regard for each other. The 2 2 pitch struck him out. After five and a half seven nothing New York. This Millennium Moment is brought to you by American General Financial Group. 
the fabled Brave Star flicked his famous wrists and propelled a downing fastball over the left field fence and into the Braves' bullpen. He admitted the impact of the historic blow did not hit him at first, saying that probably would come later. That's the way it was covered when Henry Aaron became the all-time home run king on April 8, 1974. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. What is the value of victory? What makes success so sweet? At American General, we help over 12 million people every day live the lives they've imagined with retirement services, life insurance, consumer loans. And whether they have big dreams or little dreams, the real victory is seeing their dreams come true. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only where you see this sign. Wow. Oh, check this out. I got a Volvo. But this will last you two years. Guaranteed. Cool. Phillips, light bulbs that last. Man, that sandwich was good. Is there another one? We're saving it for Dave. You can't resist Wendy's bacon mushroom melt with all that bacon and cheddar. Hey, Dave, why don't you stay out a few more laps? OK. Where's that sandwich? Gerald, I hope no one ate my lunch. When you got to have one, you got to have one. Introducing the all-new Chevy Monte Carlo. <laughs> Green. The side you show the world is up to you. City of Atlanta, at least that portion of which counts itself as baseball fans, not a very happy place tonight. Their team is staring at an 0-2 deficit in the World Series. They lost game one, 4-1. They trail 7-0 as they come up in the sixth in game two. David Cohn has thrown 73 pitches to this point. His perfect game in July against Montreal was the only complete game he pitched this year. working on very long rest nine days since his last start. Owen two to Gerald Williams. Eighteen living members of baseball's all century team are in the ballpark tonight. Some of them may be shaking their heads over some of what they've seen in this game. Not from the Yankees but from the Braves normally a fundamentally sound club that does the little things to help you win games just as the Yankees do but tonight has not been a typical Atlanta display and down goes Gerald Williams chasing one out of the strike zone. Tomorrow's an off day game three Tuesday night from the Bronx eight o'clock Eastern time. Andy Pettit will pitch for New York and Tom Glavin is slated to go for Atlanta. Ozzie Guillen's 0 for 2 reached on an error and grounded into a double play. And Bob if you're a Braves fan you realize that Tom Glavin is capable of, of beating the Yankees in Yankee Stadium and so is John Smoltz. So you know that you're not out of this series yet. You still have the weapons to go into Yankee Stadium and win two ball games or whatever it takes there to get back into this series. Cole laces 
laces. I meant to say Gian laces one off Cone to Knobloch, who makes the catch. Well, it hasn't worked out so far in this ballgame by putting Gian in, but I like the fact that they were trying to shake up their lineup to get more punch in the lineup. And you see Knobloch races across and makes the catch. Here's Knobloch. He got a good jump on the ball. Made it look easy. Chipper Jones bats with the bases empty and two out. Oh for one with a walk tonight. Two and all the count. Three and zero with Brian Jordan do next. Taking all the way, and that's a strike. Three one pitch, a sky high pop. Grocious behind third to take it. The Yankee starter last night, Orlando Hernandez, allowed one hit through seven innings of work. Cone has doled out one hit through six. Get excited for a special Monday, friends. It's like it's coming right at me. <laughs> friends, plus and only Veronica, NBC Monday. Forms like a Mercedes, no matter where it goes. Do you ever feel powerless against special interests? Ever wish you could fight back? Well, if you've got a pen, you've got the power. You can sign petitions overturning special interest laws that encourage frivolous lawsuits. Laws opening loopholes so people who break the law by driving without insurance have a new right to sue. Personal injury lawyers make big bucks and our insurance rates go up. So grab a pen and start fighting back. Handsome, athletic, non-smoker, seek soulmate for deep spiritual and physical relationship. Millionaire, cat lover. Avoid internet distractions. DowJones.com delivers only business information with an all-business search engine, customized content for leading industries, and more. DowJones.com. It's all business. I love a merger. Whoever said it isn't whether you win or lose wasn't playing for money. When you're ready, we'll be here. Harris, your biggest nights happen here. Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. Well, through six innings, the Yankees have seven runs on 12 hits. Joe, the best pitch thrown by a Brave tonight might have been the one thrown by Hank Aaron, who threw out the <laughs> ceremonial first pitch. Well, everything has gone downhill for the Braves since then. But again, they may be able to get this out of their system tonight. Play the worst game that you can possibly play, and then you can only go up. But I still think that the Braves have enough confidence in their ability that they're still going to make this a good series. Bottom of the order in the top of the seventh. Brocious, Girardi, and then Cone is due. Brocious has singled and doubled in three at bats.
Millwood was the starter. He wasn't around long. It was his shortest outing of the season, two innings plus. By the time Millwood left, it was 4 0. Before that inning was concluded, it was 5 0. He's looking at his first defeat since August 8th. A drive to center, Andrew Jones going back, and he'll run it down. From the producers of Merlin and the Odyssey. NBC November 7th. A forbidden love leads to an epic battle to save the earth. Leprechauns coming to NBC November 7th. So that would be Leprechauns on November 7th. Set your VCR, Joe. I'll probably be at home. <laughs> Watching. <laughs> Baseball season's over. You deserve a rest. Girardi. He's 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt tonight. The Braves are looking for Russ Springer to suck up some innings here. Trailing 7-0. Pitcher spot not due to hit for Atlanta unless they put a lot of men on base in their half of the inning. Brian Jordan coming in toward the line into foul ground along with Lockhart. And neither one can come up with it. Tough play there right in the no man's land. They both gave it a great effort. Jordan came a long way from right field to try to get it and Lockhart tried to get the angle on it you watch they both get there about the same time and the ball bounces between them. So that was one time the spider didn't catch the fly. <laughs> As in spider Lockhart right. For those of you just joining us that's correct. <laughs> two and two. Another chance for Andrew Jones who always makes it look so easy. That's the second out. He has drawn favorable comparisons to the likes of Willie Mays and Joe DiMaggio when it comes to glove work in center field. What do you think. Well I, I think Ken Griffey Junior is still maybe you know as good an outfielder as you're going to find Can't in the big league about right him. now. And I think Willie Mays the greatest center fielder I've ever seen. Andrew Jones is very very good. Young and Jones won his first gold glove last year and maybe three or four years from now I will say that he's as good as junior but at this point I still think junior is the best center fielder in the game. Barry Bonds thinks Andrew Jones is. Lines one to center and Jones almost misplayed it, but he records all three putouts in the inning. In addition to his pitching, Cohn has looked respectable at the plate. They are the sheep, and we are the shepherds. We tell them that college is the doorway. We tell them to prepare for the future. But the question remains, will we? Chevy trucks are the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now during Chevy Truck Month, you can lease the truck, the 2000 Chevy Silverado with a more powerful V8 than any 4x4 pickup from Ford or Dodge. During Chevy Truck Month, you'll find the biggest selection of the year on the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Chevy Trucks. 
As the countdown begins to the 21st century, there is still one number you can always count on. Bond. Bond. James Bond. This holiday season, one man will rock your world. The world is not enough. Rated PG-13. Starts November 19th. You ever shop at a buy in bulk store? Great concept, but come on, folks. Nobody needs five gallons of mayonnaise. Having this much mayo is more overkill than using a cruise missile to light a cigarette. You want to get a lot of something you can actually use for a low price? That's about a 20-minute call for only 99 cents, huh? That's right. With 1010-220, it's only 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes and just 9 cents a minute after that. All day, every day. And no monthly fees. It's simple. Just dial 1010-220. How long has this been out? NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by John Hancock, official sponsor of Major League Baseball, by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and by Daytech Online. The rules of online trading are changing. Stretch time in Atlanta, but it's quite a stretch to see the Braves getting back in this game. Not the way Cohn is pitching and not the way their bats have been slumbering for several games now. The 10-9 game six in the LCS notwithstanding, this is a team hitting well beneath 200 in the League Championship Series and the World Series combined. They have three hits in this World Series through 15 innings. And Jordan has flied out twice tonight. Bob, when we talked at the beginning of this series, we said the Braves bats were going to have to put some runs on the board. Because as good as the Atlanta staff is, you're not going to shut the Yankees down completely because they have so many ways of scoring runs. They can hit the ball out of the ballpark. They can play small ball. They can steal bases. They can hit and, hit and run. They just do a lot of things to manufacture runs. So you're going to have to score some runs to beat them. And so far, the Braves just have not been able to mount any consistency to their offense. Don Baylor, the Atlanta hitting coach. Texas had one of the most potent offenses in baseball. They couldn't figure the Yankees out in three games. The Red Sox by and large didn't score much except for the one game against Clemens when they shelled him at Fenway. And that was probably the game where they needed at least with Pedro Martinez pitching. So the Braves have company. Clemens will pitch game four at Yankee Stadium against John Smoltz. The 2 2 pitch. Full count to Jordan. Speaking of Clemens, he had an excellent outing in the division series at Texas, and then of course the poor showing at Fenway Park. And Bob, I think the country's starting to realize that maybe this New York Yankees starting staff is a lot better than people give it credit for being. Jordan walks to start the seventh. That's the fourth walk issued by David Cohn. And again, our overhead shots are courtesy of Goodyear. The blimp is the Stars and Stripes. It was 1926 when Goodyear began its first commercial blimp operation with a blimp named the Pilgrim. When you watch the, the New York Yankees pitching staff, it doesn't look like collectively that they do anything special except they seem to be able to stay off the big part of the bat you know whether that was against Texas mostly against Boston and especially here against the Braves it seems that they're either jamming them or they're out in front but they're not getting the ball on the big part of the bat and that's what pitching is all about keeping hitters off balance Cones 1 1 to Klesko and he's ahead of him 1 and 2. But even that pitch there, Bob, you can see it started on the inside part of the plate, and by the time it got to him, it's off the plate. Now, how do you get to this pitch? See what I mean? That ball's off the plate.
High fly ball back of second base. Nabla has it. Let's take a look at David Cohn as he's worked his way here into the seventh inning. Look at where that ball is. Out away from him. He hits it off the end of the bat. Off the end of the bat again. Look at how he's reaching. And that beautiful backdoor breaking ball. Look at that. Off the plate again. I mean, he is staying out in the middle of the plate. They're either reaching across the plate to try to catch up with the ball, or he's in under the hand. So he's staying out in the middle of the plate, and they're not getting good swings. Keith Lockhart's 0 for 2. And has had a couple of misadventures in the field. Ball one to him. Lockhart's a good solid bench player. Excellent pinch hitter. Can play second base for you as well. But he like the rest of the Braves hasn't had much success tonight. Three and oh. Kevin McGlinchey last seen at the end of the 15 inning marathon. Game five of the LCS at Shea Stadium. Begins to get ready in the Atlanta bullpen. And Lockhart walks. Still nobody throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Stottlemyre removes the towel to go to the mound. Well, I think what you'll see is David Cohn will let him know whether he thinks he's tiring. When you're a veteran pitcher, you have a good rapport with your pitching coach, and he'll you'll let him know that you're starting to tire a little bit, or I feel good, I'm just missing my spots, and you'll let him know whether he needs to get somebody up in the bullpen. And I guess they do. Ramiro Mendoza goes down to get loose in the bullpen. Next hitter is Greg Myers, who has the only hit yielded by Cone in the sixth inning. He hit it hard back through the middle. Actually, the hit came in the fifth. Said sixth inning on the screen, but it came to lead off the fifth. And what's interesting, Bob, is that we've seen the Yankee hitters go back through the middle and take advantage of the Braves pitchers. Myers is the only one that's actually hit the ball back through the middle. You know, trying to go that way. As well as Cone is pitching tonight, it's worth mentioning there's at least a chance that this is his last game as a Yankee. It's possible the rotation won't come around to him again in this series, and his contract is up at the end of the year. He makes in the vicinity of $8 million a season, and the Yankees have to decide if they want to reinvest that kind of money in him. What with the money it will take to sign a Derek Jeter, a Mariano Rivera, the other players on their roster, even the Yankees don't have an unlimited budget. You sure? <laughs> He's got a very high payroll. <laughs> I don't think it's unlimited. unlimited huh? Did you hear the story about Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York? She met George Steinbrenner at some function in New York this year, and she said to him, I don't know who you are, but you're obviously a very successful man. Good luck in whatever it is you do. Myers lifts it to center. Bernie Williams goes back to take it. Brian Jordan tags, advances to third. Lockhart remains at first with two outs. Well, Bob, I think there are a lot of decisions to be made. I think David Cohn has to make a decision on how important it is for him to remain a Yankee. And maybe he's willing to take a pay cut to remain in New York. And, you know, as long as they're going to, to accommodate him as far as the rotation is concerned. So I think that's a situation where I think both parties have to look at it and try to work it out. Because I think David Cohn wants to remain in New York. Yeah, everything's relative. You're making eight mil a year. You take a pay cut. They still don't have to throw any benefits for you. <laughs> Ball one to Andrew Jones. And then the team can say, well, we do not have an unlimited budget. 
we do make some cuts here and there. But you, as you said, Derek Jeter is in line for a large pay raise. That's a strike, one on one. Mariano Rivera is in the same situation. They were both arbitration cases together. Brett Boone is on deck to pinch hit if Andrew Jones reaches. Two balls and a strike. Kona's walked five. He himself has made an error, but the Braves still have only one hit. Three and one the count. And Andrew Jones has a chance here to get the Braves right back in the ball game. One pitch away from loading the bases here in the seventh. But that's in there, full count. That's a good pitch there by David Cohn. Three and one. Andrew Jones probably looking for a fastball middle of the plate in, and Cohn hits the outside edge. Again, he's trying to stay away from the big part of the bat. And a call strike three. Cohn pitches one hit ball through seven, as El Duque did last night. Hey, change might do you good. Buy a new 2000 Oldsmobile Bravada and get a six disc CD changer at no extra charge. Plus, $1,500 cash back. So you can rock, roll, and ride to hours of uninterrupted music. Get down to your Oldsmobile dealer today and start something loud. So what will happen to all this now that you're going virtual? We're not going virtual. Well, I read you're getting into internet trading, online cash management. Well, we are, yeah. The end of an era. Not at all. Online trading and the rest of it are simply new tools we're making available. You don't have available. to sugarcoat it for me, but I must tell you, I'm going to miss our little chats. Nelson, I'm not going away. The office isn't going away. The coffee? The ticker? <laughs> not going away. What about the little bull? Not going away. Mm, good. Two tickets, $28. Two hot dogs, two popcorns, and two sodas, $18. One autographed baseball, $45. Real conversation with 11-year-old son, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except it all over, even Major League ballparks. Faster, more reliable, higher quality, more profitable. Nortown Networks is building the new high-performance internet, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So tell us, what do you want the internet to be? Come together, right now, over me. The following is a reminder for anyone who's forgotten what pure joy looks like. The Olympics from Australia, only on NBC. Well, the Braves didn't score in the bottom of the seventh, but at least third base coach Ned Yost got some company. Listen. Come on, baby. Ned, come on. Get a first dude to come and see me in two days. It's all right. <laughs> it's a fact they've scored only one run, and that was Chipper Jones who trotted past him after his homer against Orlando Hernandez. Hernandez pitched seven innings of one hit ball last night and actually at that point was trailing one nothing. Cone who's been plenty good but not nearly as overpowering as Hernandez was last night has a one hitter going with five walks thrown in. He was staked to a three nothing lead before he ever took the mound and he leads seven nothing now.
Chuck Knobloch pops one to the right side. Ryan Klesko goes into foul ground to make the catch. A couple of changes for the Braves. They've got a new center fielder in a double switch. Otis Nixon is in. Andrew Jones made the last out in the bottom of the seventh. So Jones is out of the game. And Nixon will hit ninth and lead off in the last of the eighth. The new pitcher is Kevin McGlinchey. And he's in the eighth spot in the order. I think it's a great opportunity for Bobby Cox to get McGlinchey into a World Series game as quickly as possible. And then he'll know that he can count on him later in the series. Even though McGlinchey took the loss in game five on Robin Ventura's Grand Slam single, his pitching coach Leo Mazzoni says of him, he is absolutely not scared. He wants the ball. He wanted it that night, and he wants it the next time. Roll to the right side. Klesko comes up with it and beats Jeter to the bag. Now scheduled after the game on most of these NBC stations, it's your late local news. And for those of you who'd like to continue with the World Series, we'll have a post-game report on CNBC immediately following the game. Anna Storm, Barry Larkin, Craig Sager, Jim Gray, Joe Morgan and I will all be part of that program. Highlights and a look back at game two, a look ahead to game three. That's on CNBC immediately following the game. A strike to Paul O'Neill. John Smoltz, the game four starter, he's just getting some work in. They have used him in relief in this postseason, but not tonight, not in this situation. Well, Bobby has to be careful simply because Glavin is supposed to pitch game three, but what if he can't go in game three? You want to have arrested John Smoltz to take his place. Glavin is not available for game three. O'Neill's one for four. Tips it back into Myers' glove for strike two. Here's Glavin. Earlier today, late this afternoon, throwing. Then, after getting this bit of work in, he went back home and he's watching the game on television. He began feeling ill on Friday with that stomach virus. Was unable to answer the bell for game one. Maddox took his start. He is expected to start on Tuesday. He was feeling better already today. And there's every reason to expect that with a day off tomorrow, he'll be okay for game three. But Lynchy didn't feel ill at the start of the game. He might have by the time he left to say Millwood as he looks on from the dugout. Full count to O'Neill. With two out and nobody on in the top of the eighth, and the Yankees leading it 7 0. And he walks it. What a masterful performance by Greg Maddox went to waste last night. The Braves hope that Kevin Millwood, who over the course of the year at 18 and 7, had been their best pitcher. This despite the presence of past Cy Young Award winners like Maddox and Glavin and Smoltz on their staff. They hope that this kid could get them even tonight, and he just didn't have it. Bernie Williams is 2 for 3 with an intentional walk. Ball strike one. What does it say to you that Millwood, after being knocked out in the third, has stayed in the dugout with his teammates? He hasn't gone back to the clubhouse and showered and dressed. Well, I think he's watching the Yankee hitters. He thinks he's going to get another opportunity to pitch. So he wants to watch and see if McGlinchey or even Mulholland, anyone was able to find a weakness in some of these hitters. I mean, you can watch and see from the bench. You can see when a guy's a little late on a fastball in or whether he's early on a breaking ball in. You can see those things very well from the bench. And the 0-2 pitch. Way high and outside. the 
screen still one and two if the Yankees win this game they will be 20 and three in the playoffs and World Series over the last two years that's against the best competition baseball can throw at them even more impressive they would have won the last 10 World Series games they played in. play again on the other hand the Braves are looking at a six game World Series losing streak and it's hard to imagine that you could have a six game losing streak when you have Mattis Glavin and Smoltz as your top three pitchers well they lost one of those games one to nothing Another 3 2 in game six in 96 when Jimmy Key beat Maddox. Well pitched game last night that came apart on them in the eighth inning. Off the outside edge, 2 and 2. Chris Galarraga, a spectator all season long after the diagnosis of cancer, but he's responded well to treatment and they expect he'll be able to resume his career next spring. Bernie Williams rolls it back up the middle for his third hit of the night. One thing the Yankee hitters do when they get two strikes, it seems that they shorten up their swings and make contact. We saw a couple of big swings earlier in this at bat. See how he just guides it back through the middle. They shorten their swings and put the ball in play. Good hitting there. You can see him almost guide that ball right back through the middle. Earlier in the at bat you could see him having free and easy swings. But when they get two strikes they know how to hit with two strikes. And we've seen that a lot in this ball game tonight. That they've been able to produce with two strikes on them. And I, a lot of times the, the hitting instructor Chris Shambliss preaches you know shorten up on your swing and go back through the middle and we've seen them do that very successfully tonight. Like the Braves hitting coach Don Baylor Shambliss has been mentioned in connection with a couple of managerial openings. A strike to Martinez. Yankees have 13 hits to Atlanta's one. One and one. Kevin McGlinchey on the mound finds himself in the World Series in his rookie year in the majors. He went seven and three this season and his ERA was under three. He's 22 years old. Six five and two twenty. And he's ahead of Martinez a ball and two strikes. Baseball is a funny game Bobby you're talking about him being in the, as a rookie being in the World Series his first year in the major leagues Ernie Banks one of the all century players played his entire career with the Cubs and never reached the World Series and the great Ted Williams only played in one so you're pretty lucky if you get a chance to play in several World Series during your career. And he fans Martinez who tipped it back into Myers glove to the bottom of the eighth. It's all New York tonight. Is it about now or later? Does it make you nervous or confident? At American General Financial Group, our life insurance companies sell more policies than anybody. Solutions to build a better future for your children, to carry on your business. It's about trust, about living the life you've imagined. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. Lexmark is changing the face of printing with a passion. The new Lexmark Z-Series printers. They have the highest inkjet resolution on the planet to make your ideas jump right off the page. Lexmark. Passion for printing ideas. Five things to consider about the Chevy Impala. It's new. It starts under $20,000. It's designed, engineered, and built to be carefree. It's at your Chevy dealer now. It's received the highest frontal crash rating possible. Five stars from the federal government. The new Chevy Impala. 
As USA Today put it, it's a lot more car than you imagine, at a lower price than you expect. The new Chevy Impala. Let's go for a drive. Between every milestone are moments we share together. Now at McDonald's, we're saluting the Walt Disney World Millennium Celebration. Start with two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg for $2, or two Big Macs for $2. Where can you start celebrating the millennium? Michelob Light has a smooth, satisfying taste you won't find in an ordinary light beer. Surprise! Hi, baby. Oh, hi, Daddy. Beer or Michelob Light? A faraway land brought them together. I'm happy right here. And led them to a magical secret where a forbidden love Armies are gonna fight each other. Sparked an epic war. Sure! that could destroy their world. I warned you to pay the ultimate price. And ours. Leprechauns, NBC Sunday in two weeks. While we were away, Mel Stottlemyre, after conferring with David Cohn, you see him make that signal to Joe Torre, indicating that Cohn is done. And in fact, he heads for the clubhouse. Seven innings, one hit, five walks, four strikeouts for Cohn. He threw 109 pitches while he was in there. And now it's Ramiro Mendoza. And he has really been pitching well once he got on track. And everyone on the Yankees says as long as he stays on top of the ball, he has an excellent sinker. When he drops down a little bit, the ball seems to straighten out. He'd be in the starting rotation of almost any other team. Maybe not the Braves, and obviously not the Yankees, but most other clubs in the big leagues. He was the winner of game three at San Diego in last year's World Series. For the regular season he went nine and nine for New York. The first man he faces is 40 year old Otis Nixon. Who had only 151 plate appearances this year and batted 205. He chops it over the mound. Knoblock whirls throws. Bounces it. And Nixon beats it out. Well, what's up with that, Joe? Well, he made a play like that against Boston where he jumped up in the air and made a perfect throw to first base. But this one he throws into the ground and it just doesn't work. It's a tough play because Otis Nixon very fast down the line. The watch, he makes the catch. He wants to get rid of it quickly. He jumps in the air and his throw lands about halfway, but it doesn't get the first base in time. As you can see, Nixon beats it out. And it scored an infield single. Nixon is still plenty fast. Well, watch. Knobloch wants to jump up in there and throw the ball as he did in the Boston series and get the run at first. He actually makes a one hop throw right on target. But he was actually running away from first base, so he didn't get as much on the throw as he wanted. So in one swing, the Braves now have as many hits off Mendoza as they did against Cone in seven innings. One and two to Gerald Williams. Foul at the plate. And you'll see a lot of ground balls and top balls when Mendoza is throwing at his best because he has such a heavy sinker. You hit the top of the ball as we saw Nixon do and you see Gerald Williams on top of a couple of pitches. Gerald Williams got the big double off Kenny Rogers that started the 11th inning rally that won the pennant for them. And Williams scored the pennant winning run. But apart from that he hasn't been on base much lately at the top of the order. A bouncer to second. Knoblock shovels to Jeter. And Williams hits into a 4-6-3 double play. One reason, certainly not the sole reason, but one reason why the Braves are struggling to score is that their leadoff man is two for his last 29. 
Watch Knobloch. Perfect feed to Jeter. He comes across, and that's the way you make a double play. Four to six to three. Perfect timing there. You can tell they've worked together a lot on that particular play. Ozzy Guillen taps it back to Mendoza. Just like that, the Braves are finished in the eighth. Now there's a Chevy Venture with flip and fold seats and a built-in entertainment system. I knew I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. Fun things are bound to happen when Chevy and Warner Brothers get together. Introducing the new Warner Brothers edition from Chevy Venture, the most versatile minivan ever. One quick call can help you learn more. Let's go! Okay, let's take another call for our expert. We've got Ed in Cleveland on the line. You guys are way off. That sector's trending up, and with overseas support and strong earnings, it's an obvious buy record. Ed! Uh, consumer confidence is strong. Ed! Uh, excuse me. I'm on TV. I don't care. Take out the garbage. The whole world can hear you. Take it out! I'm analyzing security! It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. It's taken 100 years and over 15,000 players to assemble the most exclusive team in history, the Major League Baseball All-Century Team. Now you can order the commemorative video and book by calling 1-888-CENTURY. Both honor the game's greatest players through unforgettable images and stories, exclusive interviews, and vintage footage. Order the book and video for only $44.95 plus shipping by calling 1-888-CENTURY. This message furnished by Major League Baseball. Oh, my God. A co-ed murdered. Superstar athletes accused. You got away with one before. A secret tradition exposed. All new Law & Order Special Victims Unit, NBC Monday. Hi, folks. Fred Rosen with Eric Carros, live at our Burbank studios, getting ready to play Instant Replay, your chance to win $1 million. Hey, last night, our big winner won over $8,000 worth of prizes, including a new Wave Runner. Golf clubs in a trip anywhere in the continental United States, and tonight, of course, Eric will be asking a question. Yes, I will, Fred. And here's an early hint. Listen to what I have to say very closely during the first segment. Plus, we've had a ton of calls, so we will talk about the Pete Rose interview. You have something to oh, say yes, about it. yes, I do. All right, watch, win, and stay with us. We're coming up right after the game. Are you tall or am I short? Uh, I'm standing on a box. Oh, okay. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. By Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And by AT&T One Rate 7 Cent Plan, one simple rate, all day, every day. Turner Field has begun to empty out, and as some of these fans leave, no doubt they're wondering whether the tickets for Game 6 will be good. It looks like the Braves will have to win at least two of three at Yankee Stadium to bring the series back here. Mop-up time as McGlinchey works till the day. 0-2. Thirteen Yankee hits. One of the great things about a baseball game is every day is a different day. And it appears that, obviously that the Yankees are going to go home up two games to none. But I'm telling you that I've seen Tom Glavin pitch. I've seen John Smoltz pitch. And we've seen Greg Maddox and all three are capable of winning a game on the road. And I think Bobby Cox is aware of that. And I think he's going to keep his team in that vein. But they still have to score some runs. They're going to have to figure a better way to attack these Yankee pitchers. Lockhart can't get it. And it's another hit for the day. His second of the night. Looking back to 1996, the Braves won game one 12 to 1. Andrew Jones, as a rookie, homering in his first two World Series at bats at Yankee Stadium. Then Maddox was close to unhittable in game two. It was 4 nothing. 
considering the way they had blitzed through the division series and the league championship series and the fact that the Braves were then the defending world champions having beaten the Cleveland Indians in 1995 people thought it was all but over now we have the roles reversed Bob I mean the Yankees are coming off the world championship last year and they've been able to just breeze through everyone. And we'll just have to see if the Braves are able to pick themselves up and bounce back. I think one ball game can turn this whole series around, but that ball game has to be Tuesday night in New York. So a lot of pressure will be put on Tom Glavin and the rest of the Braves to make sure that they win that ball game on Tuesday night. The 0-2 to Brocious, a called strike three. Here's what remains games three four and five if necessary at Yankee Stadium. Then back to Turner Field if the Braves can get something done in New York for games six and seven. Girardi is the only Yankee non pitcher without a hit tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. It was tonight's Yankee starter David Cohn who began the turnaround for them in 96 by beating Glavin in Atlanta in game three. Then in game four the Yankees trailed six to nothing and came back to win. That's the game where Leyritz had the big home run off Mark Wolders. Then in game five Andy Pettit with relief help from John Wetland wins one to nothing over Smoltz. Then Jimmy Key outduels Maddox. And the Yankees win game six at home. No one thought anything like that could happen. And the four to nothing defeat by Maddox in game two of that series is the last time the Yankees have lost the World Series game. Jimmy Lairitz and the Rocket. Two and two to Girardi. Paul O'Neill, you wonder how much longer he'll be the Yankees' right fielder. He has been terrific for them, both in terms of production and his intense presence. Bounce to third, short hop by Chipper Jones. Can he find the handle in time? Yes. So he avoids the E5 by recovering on this. Well, he charges to get it on the short hop. Can't make the short hop, but he stays with it, grabs it, and he fires a strike to first base. That's what you call staying with a ground ball, and he, you see the throw does beat Girardi to first base. Now Mendoza, who has one career plate appearance, makes contact. Lockhart takes it and throws him out. To the bottom of the ninth, three outs from a 2 0 lead in the series. It's timeless, like her beauty. Ageless, like her smile. And like your love, everlasting. Is there any other way to show your love was meant to last a lifetime? Well, you could tell her. Then with the same 13 grand, she could have over $60,000 for her retirement. We just thought you should know. Ask a financial advisor about Sun America, the retirement specialist. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only will you see this sign. Jim and John were competing for the same promotion. Then Jim got the amazingly quiet Genie Accelerator, which opens twice as fast. Jim got to work quicker. Jim got the big promotion. John works for Jim now. The Accelerator, only from Genie. Excuse me, 
sir. Forgot your receipt. Check outlines. Who needs them? This is the future of e-business. Have a nice day. Still trying to make the major leagues? Log on to MajorLeagueBaseball.com to reach the major leagues every day. Video highlights on demand. Live game audio. Get comprehensive World Series coverage and order your official clubhouse cap and tee. MajorLeagueBaseball.com lets you be a part of the major leagues, and it may even help your game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Thanks again to the crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes for the view of tonight's game they've provided from overhead. 51,226 were here at the start. Less than half of that remaining as the Braves come up in the bottom of the ninth trailing seven to nothing. The all century team was honored before tonight's game. It's doubtful that Lefty Grove Christy Matthewson Sandy Koufax or Bob Gibson could have held the Braves any more in check than Yankee pitching has through the first two games. Might have a few more strikeouts. <laughs> there are a lot of zeros on that sheet. Two hits last night, two hits so far tonight. Their only run on Chipper Jones Homer. Of the two hits tonight, one was hit sharply. A line single to center by the catcher Greg Myers. The other was an infield hit by Otis Nixon. And there's their third hit as Chipper Jones takes one through the box. Well, Mendoza gets a sinker up a little bit. And Chipper takes advantage of it and hits it right back through the middle. So that one is up about bell tie and he rips it back through the middle for a base hit. Strike one to Jordan. He's flied out twice and walked. So far in this series, first two games, Bob, they have pitched Brian Jordan away, 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 and they've had him reaching for pitches. We've seen him hit a couple of balls off the end of the bat and just not be able to have a good swing at a pitch. Sometimes when they're staying away from you, I think you have to force them to do something different. Maybe move up a couple of inches on the plate. See, there it is again, out over the plate, and he doesn't have that same swing that we've talked about with Jordan. See where Girardi's set up? Everything has been out there 90% of the time. Cone made a mistake in his second at bat but he wasn't able to hit the ball out of the ballpark actually it was his first at bat there it is again a little number charged by Brocious quick throw got him what happens is you have teams they have scouts following you for the last couple of weeks of the season to see which pitches you're handling best Nice play here by Brocious. And I talked to Mike Gene Michaels before the ball game. He said they had two guys on each team, not one. They had two. So that, you know, if someone else, you know, saw something different than he did, they were able to combine their knowledge and come up with a good scouting report. And I'd have to say that looking at the way the Yankees pitchers have pitched, not only in this, but in the division and the LCS. And now the World Series, I think their scouting reports are very good. They know exactly where to attack each hitter. It's one thing to have good scouting reports, and obviously the Yankees do. Right. It's another thing to have a pitching staff that can pitch to those reports. Exactly. And I, I think uh, the one thing that the Braves have been able to do their entire careers pitch to hitters' weaknesses. 
whether that be off-speed pitches or sinkers or whatever, they've been able to vary their, their speeds and, and go to a hitter's weakness. And so far in this series, it's, you know, the Yankees have done a better job at that. One-two pitch. Misses the inside corner. Two and two to Klesko. For instance, we saw Klesko hit the home run off two breaking balls. All they're throwing him now is fastballs in and breaking balls in off the plate. Mike Stanton in the Yankee bullpen. Just in case things get completely out of hand here. Klesko hits one in the air to right. O'Neill is there to take it. Fastball in on his fist again. While we have a chance, this play of the game is brought to you by Merrill Lynch. There's a new way to work with Merrill Lynch, and that's any way you want. This is the hit by Paul O'Neill off a 1-2 curveball from Kevin Millwood that produced the game's first run. The first three Yankees all singled. That made it 1-0. By the time the top half of the first was over it was three nothing and it's only gotten worse for Millwood and the Braves since. A ball to Lockhart. Mendoza an out away from completing a two inning stint but obviously it was not a save situation. A seven nothing game when he entered. The carnage was over by the top of the fifth. The Yankees haven't scored since then. Three in the first, two in the third, one in both the fourth and fifth for a 7 0 lead. Three and oh. Lockhart's 0 for 2 with a walk. Obviously taking all the way and might be taking another one here on three and one. Full count. A base hit would allow the Braves to avoid the shutout. I assume those are Yankee fans standing up with two strikes. Well there's some very faint hearted tomahawk chopping going on but not much at this stage. This is too good a team to go this quietly. We'll see what happens when we get to the Bronx. He walks. See what Tory has in mind here. Maybe just late dinner reservations. <laughs> just checking the lineup card. Here's Greg Myers. He's walked, singled, and fly to center. Cuts and misses. We talked to Joe Tory about the difference in managing. You know in the National League as compared to managing in an American League ballpark with the DH. And he was very open and honest with us. He basically said that he enjoyed National League baseball better and that it was a better brand of baseball. Bobby Cox feels the same way. And there's Joe telling Mendoza get on top. So he's not on top right there and you see the movement of his ball is a little different. It's kind of flat. It's tailing a little bit of his flat. Now watch where he throws this from. See that's three quarters not even not even a good three quarters. But, and they say he's most effective when he gets on top of his sinker. Myers hits it right through the wickets in the center field and produces a run.
And Joe is not happy because he's not getting on top. And watch this pitch. See where he throws it from? He drops down. And that's more three-quarters motion. And he wants him to get a little bit more on top. But that ball there is smashed right back through the middle. When he first came in, we saw a lot of top ground balls. Now you see them hitting a few hard ground balls. So Joe goes to the bullpen, and we go to commercial. It's 11 a.m. Do you know where your stocks are? CNBC.com. Profit from it. Chevy trucks are the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And now, during Chevy Truck Month. Back at Turner Field, Ramiro Mendoza was cruising along looking to finish the game. But a two-out single by Greg Myers produces Atlanta's first run. And Joe Torre, even with a 7-1 lead, goes to the bullpen. What's his purpose here, Joe? Well, I, I think the fact that Joe went out to get it tells you something. He, uh, he made a motion. He wanted him to get on top, and he didn't get on top. We saw the next few pitches were not on top. But what happened was uh, I think Joe was just unhappy, and he's going to take Mendoza out so that he can save him for later on in the series. But when he's on top, we saw a lot of top ground balls and weak ground balls. But when he dropped down a little bit, we saw the three-quarters motion, not as much movement or sink action on his fastball, sinking action on his fastball. Hard to find something to be upset about when you're about to go ahead 2-0 in the series and you lead 7-1 in the ninth, but Torrey has found something that's less than perfect. So he brings in Jeff Nelson. He faced a couple of hitters in the eighth inning last night. Nelson wears number 43 because that's the number of his relief pitching idol Dennis Eckersley who for a long long time was the premier reliever in the American League with the Oakland A's. So Mendoza might be the only glum New York Yankee tonight. <laughs> Well, but he'll get over it because, you know, all, all he's concerned with is the team winning. He would have rather have been able to do the job for the team, but, you know, he knows that he's going to get another opportunity to pitch in the World Series. And he knows that he did a great job in the LCS for, for the Yankees. He helped them get here to the World Series. Pitcher's spot in the order is due. It's the eighth slot. As David Cohn pitched the first seven and yielded only one hit. He's going to get his second career World Series victory against no defeats. So the pitcher's spot is due, and Brett Boone, who sat out tonight's game, with Keith Lockhart taking his place at second, as Bobby Cox. Made some changes in his lineup in an unsuccessful attempt to find some runs in that bat rack somewhere. So Boone's the pinch hitter with two outs in the ninth. Ball one from Nelson. And a lot of people will look at the lineup that. Bobby Cox put out there. He made some changes at short second. I, I really think that you have you have a seven game series. You have time to try something to jump start your ball club. I think he'll go back to his normal lineup on Tuesday in New York. But I, I really feel that what he did today was trying to jump start this team because they had not scored a lot of runs even in the New York series. They had not been producing a lot of runs. So he just wanted to try something and with some guys that have been swinging the bat pretty well. Guillen had gotten some key hits for him. Lockhart had swung the bat well both coming off the bench so he said well I'm going to give them a shot at playing in a ball game and give them forward bats. And with the left hander Andy Pettit going for New York you put Boone back in right handed bat. Weiss is a switch hitter. They might use their other shortstop Jose Hernandez as a right handed designated hitter in game three. That's in there two and two. 
There's Hernandez. Not called upon tonight. And the 2-2 pitch. And Boone rips it down the left field line. It's a fair ball. Extra bases in the corner. It's 7-2, and runners are at second and third. The Braves had two hits through eight. They have three hits in the ninth. Well, it may be too late for this ball game, but at least they're building some confidence to know that they can score some runs. This is breaking ball that Boone rips down the left field line and goes into the corner. And the diehards who remain are making some noise. Otis Nixon had an infield single in the eighth. That's his only at bat to this point. And Otis spins away. And if you're the Braves, all you want to do is make sure you give the Yankees a good finish here and give them something to think about when you go to New York. He takes a strike. Rivera is just a spectator hands on hips and the same could be said of Mike Stanton the lefty. Hits sharply to short. Jeter's up with it. And that's the way game two ends in Atlanta. Two runs in the bottom of the ninth for the Braves. Too little, too late. Two nothing New York in the series. Of course, the Yankees are comfortable going back to New York with a two nothing series lead but I think you'll have to, the Braves will find out what they're made of they'll go to New York on Tuesday and I expect them to come out with a different attitude a different approach I think they're going to have to make some adjustments to what they've seen the Yankees pitchers do to them and tonight's Chevrolet player of the game is David Cohn so now the Braves will look to do the very thing the Yankees did to them three Octobers ago. And now for some housekeeping. The final score once again, the Yankees 7 and the Braves 2. Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, we're in the Bronx to bring you World Series Game 3 with Andy Pettit going for New York and Tom Glavin scheduled to pitch for the Braves. A look back here at some of the ceremony before the game honoring the all-century team. So coming up next on most of these NBC stations, it's your late local news. For those of you who'd like to continue with our World Series coverage, tune to CNBC right now for the post-game report. For Joe Morgan, Jim Gray, and Craig Sager, I'm Bob Costas. This is NBC, home of the 1999 World Series. And from Atlanta, Georgia, good night, everybody. What a race at the rock. Today in NASCAR, Jeff Burton captured his sixth win of the year. His That's over. We'll return to National Geographic Explorer. So stay tuned and you won't miss a thing. This is the CNBC World Series Post Game. In the final tonight in Atlanta, the New York Yankees take a 2-0 lead in the 1999 World Series with a 7-2 victory over the Atlanta Braves. The Yankee bats were hot tonight, 14 hits. The Braves managing just five hits, three of those coming 
in the final inning. So the Yankees head home for game three with a 2-0 lead as they look to win their third World Series title in four years. Hi everybody, Hannah Storm back in Atlanta with the CNBC post-game report. I'm joined by Cincinnati Reds all-star shortstop Barry Larkin. Barry, we're going to get to your insights in just a few moments. The winning pitcher tonight was David Cohn. Moments ago, he spoke with Jim Gray. Chan, um, hey, thank you very much, Han. I'm here with Dave Cohn. Dave, congratulations on the game tonight. How were you basically able, you, seven innings, just one hit you gave up until the last inning. How have Yankee pitchers been able to basically manhandle the Braves hitting? Well, I just think we, we sort of had a don't give in type of attitude with pitching. And uh, I thought I got away with one in the first inning to Jordan that could have easily been a home run. And then from there on out, I, I walked a couple of guys, but I didn't give in and made some good pitches when I had to. Do you think that at all maybe the Braves got a little bit of confidence in this last inning because the, you guys have shut them down. They got as many runs in this last inning as they did almost the entire uh, series. Well, that was kind of my mindset. I didn't want to see any of those guys get hot, and uh, they can get hot in a hurry. And, uh, of course, kind of, you know, 96, uh, they beat us twice at home, so this series is far from over. What about the situation? How do you guard against that? You guys had two very big games here uh, that you got blown out in 1996 in your home park. Then you came here. How do you guard against the exact same thing happening to you? Well, you just think about Tom Glavin, because you know what he can do. And then they've got Smoltz waiting to pitch, too. So they can set a number one starter out every game. So you, you realize anything can happen. Yet, on the other hand, do you start to sniff it? Do you start to smell this championship? Well, you have to feel good about it. I mean, we came in here and got two. And, we're, you know, we've got uh, some good pitchers going as well. Andy Pettit's ready for game three and Roger Clemens for four. So, you know, we feel pretty good about it. David, congratulations on a great performance. Thanks, Jim. All right, let's go back upstairs to you, Hannah. Thanks, Jim. So David Cohn gets his second World Series victory of his career, both of them coming against the Atlanta Braves. He goes to 8-3 and three in the postseason for his career, 6-1 and one as a New York Yankee. Bobby Cox's team had had a lot of trouble generating offense. He made some adjustments in his starting lineup, inserted Greg Myers in the starting lineup at catcher. Eddie Perez uh, had a problem with a, a blister on a finger on his left hand. So Greg Myers, uh, pretty much the only offensive substitution that worked out tonight for Bobby Cox. He two hits and moments ago spoke with Craig Sager. Well, Kevin Miller down the stretch gave up two runs or less than 12 consecutive starts, but tonight he lasts just two innings, roughed up pretty good. Greg Myers, you were catching him. What was wrong? I think it goes back to his location, probably wasn't what he wanted it to be. You know, he was up in the zone and, and we got good hitters over there and they're going to take advantage of mistakes. At one point, Leo Mazzoni said, you're overthrowing. You're trying to do too much. You're trying to be superhuman. Did you sense that? Well, I think a little bit. He was kind of, he's falling off the mound a little bit, you know, and and that comes from maybe trying to, you know, trying to do too much. And, you know, it's hard in, in a game like this to tell yourself just relax and do it like you normally do. So, well, like I said, it, it's just, it was just a little off of this location, up a little bit, and, and uh, I'm sure he's not real happy with it. On the other side of the coin, David Cohn gave up only one hit, seven innings. That was yours. Why was he so effective? Well, he was he was tough. He uh, he was he wasn't really around the plate a lot. So I mean, he might throw you that first pitch strike, and then he, he doesn't give in. He makes you pretty much chase his pitches, and and uh, you know when he, when he gets two strikes, you, you don't know what to look for. He's, he, he'll throw you anything at any time. A loss is a loss, but what's the difference between 7 nothing and 7-2? What does those two runs do for you guys? I don't, I don't know. Like you say, it's, it still hurts. It's a loss. But at least the amount of rally, which we hadn't, we hadn't done at all, that's, that's a good feeling to do that. All right, thanks. Okay. Craig Myers, two for three tonight with an RBI. Craig Sager is a very busy man. That interview is on tape. This next one is live. He's standing by with Braves hitting coach Don Baylor. Craig? Oh, thank you, Hannah. We talked about the difference between 7 0, 7 2. Did you see anything out there that maybe gives you some hope that they're breaking out of this slump? Well, we just haven't had very many good at bats. Uh, our approach is um, in the World Series completely different than the LCS. The LCS, we had good grinding at bats. Right now, it seems you know, we're becoming a little timid at the plate right now. We're just not swinging the bats well. What is your approach as a hitting coach to solving these problems? Well, it's not like the. It's not a lack of effort. The guys are still uh, working in the cage and doing things, but once we take it up to the plate, 
we just kind of lose it. Uh, I don't know if we're intimidated by their pitchers or, or what, but, you know, they faced these guys before, and we're going to a tough place uh, to play in Yankee Stadium. Are some of the players over swinging or maybe trying to pull the ball too much? Well, we're swinging at that outside breaking ball that's not a strike. It's off the plate, and we're continue to chase and uh, David Cohn and uh, El Duque just going to keep throwing it out there. What about Andy Pettit, the game you face in uh, game three in New York? What do you have on him? Well, he's a tough competitor. He, you know, he throws that cutter in on guys and once he starts having success, he's going to keep coming right there. We're just going to have to either hit it or we got to take it and get something uh, started early. Uh, we get behind in a ball game and we just can't catch up. The hitting problems are contagious all the way down the lineup, but one point that was made by Bob Costas and Joe Morgan was Gerald Williams not getting on base. What is his problem? Well, that's been a, a thing that we've kind of fought all year, you know, with number one, number two, uh, sometimes uh, their struggles, and that's why Chipper Jones ends up uh, taking a lot of walks or they're pitching around him a lot of times, and Gerald has to get on base for us. He can start some things uh, in New York, but he has to get on base for us. All right, thanks for being with us. Let's go back upstairs to him. Thanks a lot, Craig. The Atlanta Braves in the first two games of the 1999 World Series have managed just three runs on seven hits. It was a lost weekend for the Atlanta Braves. Tonight, the Yankees would heat up their bats, and the hits kept on coming. As they beat the Atlanta Braves in game two by a final of seven to two, now New York returns home with a commanding 2-0 lead in the World Series. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit fidelity.com to open an account. The job of leadership today is not just to make money, it is to make meaning. Your people don't want jobs, they want missions. Give them the tools to collaborate, to make a difference. The cost of losing a typical employee is $50,000. But losing an idea, an unknown possibility... Well, that, my friend, is losing the war. PeopleSoft. Applications for e-business. Small business software, $400. Letterhead, $610. Office supplies, $90. Remembering who you work for, priceless. MasterCard Business Bonuses lets you earn miles good on any airline, no blackouts. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. I like to live big. I like big surprises. Big dreams. Introducing the innovative new GE Spectre. Big healthy babies. <laughs> it's so big it holds a turkey, two casseroles, and three loaves of bread. I like to entertain. Big time. Or 288 hors d'oeuvres. Or 12 perfect pies. I love having a whole house full of people. GE Spectre. The biggest, most accurate oven in America. It cooks big inside and out. Most of all, I like the big smiles that I get when I cook big. Cook big with the incredible new GE Spectra. Big. Welcome back to Turner Field in Atlanta, where the New York Yankees have the Braves in an 0-2 hole. And there's what things look like tonight. The Yankees jumping all over the Braves. 14 hits as they shelled Braves starter Kevin Millwood. Millwood, an 18-game winner, had really emerged as the ace of the Braves staff this year. And he just got rocked tonight and had a disastrous first inning against the Yankees. What happened, Barry? Well, you know, Woody has pitched, before today's game, he had pitched 252 innings. That's a lot of innings. Uh, you know, I think that coupled with the fact that it was cold out, he was throwing a lot of balls up in the zone. His curveball, he's leaving out over the plate. Uh, you know, he really struggled tonight. All right, let's take a look at that first inning. High fastball. Fastball out over the plate. Breaking ball out over the plate. He really struggled with his command. Normally he's working down in the zone today. He was just up in the zone and out over the plate. You know, you do that to a good hitting ball club and they're going to make the pay. 
Gave up five hits in the first inning, allowed three runs and 38 pitches. And overall, the line on Millwood lasted two innings, gave up five runs, eight hits, two walks, and two strikeouts, and really put the Braves in a, in a tough hole, especially uh, as good as David Cohn was pitching on the other end. Coney, on the other hand, was just pitching tremendous. He was hitting the spots all day. Uh, he had his fastball working, curveball, everything change up. He's throwing from different arm angles. He basically did what El Duque did, just not hiding the ball today. And, uh, Has not he was on top of his game. A typical He's Atlanta pitching display. Beautifully. Actually, he did exactly what El Duque did. For the second night in a row, the Braves faced a Yankee starter who pitched a one-hitter through seven innings. And then they've, there, there's the line, uh, allowing the one hit through seven innings, no earned runs, four strikeouts, and five walks uh, for David Cohn, who just continues to be a clutch pitcher in the postseason. I tell you, 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 you know, you got to face El Duque in game one, and then you come back with David Cohn, and, you know, tonight it was perfect, David Cohn, and it was unbelievable. Uh, these guys are down 2-0 now. Now, now they got to go to New York, and, uh, you know, now they got Andy Pettit, another tough uh, pitcher. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough road back, no doubt. Andy Pettit, a player who there was some trade talk about uh, the Yankees trading him at midseason, and he came on and has been terrific for them in the postseason, so things don't get any easier. But as a hitter, Barry, what does your mentality have to be if you're one of the Atlanta Braves? Well, you know, I think the important thing, and uh, we talked about it a little earlier today, is that uh, people have to figure out how to get on base. I, I think what uh, Ozzie did early, in, Ozzie Guillen did early in the ball game by getting on base with a bunt, although it was an error on David Cohn, but at least he got on base. And uh, there are... Um, Brian Jordan just missed a home run, and uh, it would have been a two-run home run, and I think at that particular time when they were down 3 nothing. But, uh, you know, they have to figure a way on how to get on base. They have to get on base for those guys. All right, more from the CNBC postgame show coming up. Uh, we're going to hear from Brave skipper Bobby Cox, whose team is in an 0-2 hole. And it began here at Turner Field as a special night with the All-Century team being honored. Look at Ted Williams and uh, Chipper Jones and the rest of the Braves looking on, along with Joe Torre, the legends of the game here at Turner Field tonight. And more on Game 2 of the World Series coming up. <laughs> ourselves at a safe distance. We don't have blind faith. We read. We listen. We learn. We plan to retire rich. 795 stock trades, low margin interest rates, comprehensive research. Shortrade.com, a smart tool for smart investors. Hurry, we'll miss kickoff. Want a quick bite? Fruit, chips, roast Cornish game ham with baked potatoes, T-bone steak, clams on the half shell. Uh -huh. Introducing a whole new way to cook, the Advantium Oven from GE. It uses the power of light to cook in a fraction of the time. Food that used to take over an hour now takes 15 minutes. Baked potatoes, 10. And unlike with microwave ovens, mm. it's crispy and juicy. The new Advantium from GE. I think we're a little early. early. Cooking at the early. speed of life. Squawk Box heads south with the nation's top CEOs. Hear from the leaders behind the companies you invest in and find out how they plan to do business bigger and better. The CEO Summit, live from Boca Raton, Florida, begins Thursday on CNBC's Squawk Box. At Turner Field tonight, the New York Yankees taking a 2-0 lead in the World Series. A winner by the final score of 7-2. It was the sixth straight World Series loss for the Atlanta Braves, all of them coming against the New York Yankees. In fact, the Braves have lost four of their last five playoff games. Bobby Cox has got to turn things around in a hurry. Moments ago, he spoke with the media. Excluding uh, tonight's ninth inning, how surprised are you at the team's lack of offense so far in the series? Um, <clears throat> we, we didn't hit the ball last night. Really, we didn't hit the ball tonight until the ninth. And, you know, we didn't really tear up the ball against the Mets either, so... You know, both those pitchers are tough, and you're going to have, you know, you got to figure the game is going to be pretty tight, actually, and we didn't have the pitching tonight to make it tight, and, you know, to keep it close, we just couldn't do it. 
Okay, question right behind you, Darrell. <coughs> right there. Uh, Bobby, what do you say to your team after the game? And do you bring up 96 where, you know, you won both games up there? Um, you know, we, we played a bad game. I know the Yankees played a real bad game against Boston. And 96, we went up there and beat them. Real. We were in the teens, I think, uh, the first two games of 96 up there with, you know, facing good pitching. And, um, you know, that's kind of the way we got beat up tonight. We didn't give up that many, but... We, we, you know, we're a team of good pitching and timely hitting, and uh, we we can't we did not get runners on tonight to do anything. Okay, question right here, Bruce. Go ahead. Bob was um, was McClinchy just tight, or you know, was his ball just up all night? What what was the problem with him? I'm I'm sorry, Millwood. Millwood, yeah. I don't know. You know, Kevin can ride the ball high and uh, also go downstairs, and I think tonight, honestly, he was kind of in the middle where he shouldn't have been. And um, it was all a matter of location. He wasn't down, and he wasn't up high enough. And, um, you know, he, he got right in that area that's good to hit at. Okay, anything else? Question, go ahead. One second, sir. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Um, if today, after the lineup changes tonight, let's call it plan B, what's plan C now? Well, we're facing a left-hander, you know, when we go up there, and we'll play the other guys. And we're just honestly trying to score some runs right now. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Dan, up front. What's the situation? He, uh, he threw today, and he felt pretty good, and he stuck around for a while, and uh, he should be ready to pitch Tuesday. If not, Smoltz ready to go. We'll see. And so Tom Glavin expected to uh, go in game three for the Atlanta Braves. They were the winningest team in the majors this season, winning 103 games, but they looked anything but in tonight's game two against the Yankees. A terrible game for the Braves, both offensively and defensively. Could the night get any worse? For the answer on that, let's go down to the field and join Craig Sager. Well, Hannah, it is true that the Braves are down 2-0. But their foundation has not been cracked. The foundation, of course, of the Braves is pitching. Just going through the clubhouse, asking for anything positive, what they felt going to New York. Virtually every coach or manager told the players, hey, we still have Smoltz. We still have Glavin. We still have Maddox to throw at them in New York. Three players with Cy Young Awards. Remember, John Smoltz is the winningest pitcher in playoff history, in postseason history. And he will be going up in game four. Tom Glavin, one win away from tying Whitey Ford as the winningest left-hander in postseason history. So although the Braves are down 2-0, and yes, they are dejected after losing this one, the two runs in the ninth inning to give them something to think about offensively has helped. But the big thing is pitching. They feel that they have Glavin, Smoltz, and Maddox, and they think they can put a dent into this 2-0 lead and somehow come back to Atlanta and force a game six and seven. Hannah? Well, they have to look uh, no further for inspiration than to the New York Yankees, who lost their first two games at home to the Braves, came back here and won three, and then went back home and won the World Series in 1996. Your World Series ring was earned in 1990 when your Cincinnati Reds beat the heavily favored Oakland A's. You won the first two games at home. What's the mentality of a team up 2-0 in a World Series? Well, it's just a matter of just going about business as usual. And, you know, the reason the Yankees are in the situation is because they're a very professional team and the fact that they go out and just do the fundamental things correctly and that's what they did in these first two ball games and they got to be thinking hey let's just steady the course and just keep doing what we're doing of course everyone else the fans and the media is going to start clamoring for a sweep but as a player you don't think that way no you know when you get to the fifth inning if you're up three oh you get to the fifth inning then you know start filling those juices but juices but before that you know it's just a matter of going out there and not having that on your mind at all because at that particular point you start taking things for granted you don't want to do that okay moments ago yankees manager joe torrey spoke with the media let's hear his comments from the interview room go ahead is that about the most hits you've had in two games out hitting a home run and scoring that many runs yeah i was thinking about the home run tonight we you know i sort of like that because when we have uh, good at bats is is trying to think about putting the ball in play and hitting line drives uh, but probably. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you expect a home run in there somewhere. But I was very pleased uh, the way we went about that fir uh, the first inning, especially with, um, you know, Bernie hitting the, the double play and then picking up two more runs after that. I thought that was big for us. Another one? Bruce? Wait, wait a minute, Bruce. <laughs> 
Joe, it looks, uh, it looks so easy with, with the approach that your hitters have and the way David Cohn pitches. It, is your team that good? I mean, 10 World Series wins in a row. Uh, is it that easy for these guys? Well, I, I wouldn't say worry about the, the hitters. It's the, it's the pitching that sets the, sets the tone of our games. Uh, and we just feel as a team, I, I think when we know what our capabilities are, we don't try to go outside ourselves. I think that's very important. Uh, that we just think in small bits and bites because that's what we need to do. We don't have home run hitters. We can hit home runs, but we don't have home run hitters. And, and uh, the pitching pretty much sets the, sets the tone for what we do. And, and David Cohn was terrific tonight. I, I didn't worry about him tonight. Last time out against Boston, he hadn't pitched in about 12 days. Tonight it was eight or nine. Uh, I felt pretty good about it because even uh, with the cold weather, he, he pitched well in the cold weather against Boston also. Mel, one second. What was working best for him, Joe? What was working best, uh, Mel, was pretty much everything. He, he, you know, he walks the tightrope every once in a while. I was kidding with Mel in the middle innings. I said, why don't you just start with the stretch? Because he, he got the man on base, and then he seemed to pitch well out of the stretch. It looked like he had better rhythm out of the stretch than he did winding up, because there are a lot of uh, little parts to his wind-up uh, with the dipsy doodle and the spinning around and stuff like that. But his splitter was good tonight. He threw some good splitters to Klesko. Uh, backdoor slider a few times. I thought his fastball, good. He doesn't throw hard, as hard as uh, other pitchers, but he's, he's able to have good movement. And I, I think that's probably the most important thing for him. David Cohn, masterful tonight, pitching a one-hitter through seven innings. If this series does manage to return to Atlanta, David Cohn would pitch game six. As things look right now, the Yankees win their seventh straight World Series victory on the road, their tenth straight overall. The gentlemen who called the game, Bob Costas and Joe Morgan, give us their thoughts right after this when the CNBC post-game show continues from Turner Field in Atlanta. Natural, real. I want to look the way I feel. I'm a Grecian man. Grecian fine. Want it quick, hassle free. A look that really looks like me. Grecian man. Grecian fine. A Grecian man, no time for gray. A new generation, a whole new day. Grecian fine. Saber, we didn't just look to research numbers or test scores. We also took a good look at your family. Introducing the all-new 2000 LeSaber, re-engineered with more safety features than any other car in its class. Stand by me. The new 2000 LeSaber by Buick. We're not relying on the government. We're not relying on the company. We're not relying on a big, fat inheritance. We trade online. We're betting on ourselves. 795 stock trades. No margin interest rates. Comprehensive research. Shortrade.com. A smart tool for smart investors. Monday on Upfront Tonight. Running for the boss's job inside Al Gore's bid for the party's top nomination, would he be better off without the president's support? That's Monday on Upfront Tonight. Monday on CNBC's Business Center. If you think the World Series earns teams big bucks, you won't believe how much income a high-tech ballpark can bring in. Our stadium's the new sports superstars. Monday, 6.30 Eastern on CNBC's Business Center. Back in Atlanta, and now back down to the field with Craig Sager, who's joined live by the Yankees' Daryl Strawberry. Craig? Well, thanks, Hannah. Two different games, but obviously the Yankees won them both. Let's talk about the one tonight. 14 hits. You guys pounded the ball pretty well against Millwood. Sitting there watching, what was wrong with Millwood, and why were you guys able to hit him so hard? Well, I think we're just a team that um, have a lot of patience, and we wait for situations. And, you know, tonight we just started off real well. Um, you know, the guys got on base early in the ball game, and then hitters up behind them um, started um, making things happen. Um, we have that type of team. Once we um, feel that a door is open, you know, we try to, you know, go all the way with that door. 
with no designated hitter, your role has been limited. But last night in game one, you came up there, you got the key walk that led to the rally that led to Greg Maddox basically losing the game. Why did he not want to pitch to you? What did you see up there that you were so patient? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Maddox didn't want to pitch to me. Uh, you know, Maddox is one of the best pitchers around in baseball, and he pitches to everybody. So, you know, it was just a situation I was looking for a good pitch that I could handle. Um, Maddox is the type of pitcher where you, you know, you have to make him throw strikes. So he likes to get hitters to chase pitches out of the strike zone, and I was just very patient in that situation, and, you know, it, it gave, uh, gave us a good opportunity to get things going. Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox, the offside Youngs are all great pitchers. You faced them all. Will you be a factor against Glavin? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to be playing in that game. Um, I just, you know, play my role. I think that's the you know, good thing about this ball club that we have. Everybody plays a good role over here for us, and, you know, nobody gripes about what we have to do, and I think that's why we go out and win ball games. Well, great to see you in postseason. All right, thank you. Good to see you. Let's go back upstairs to Hannah. And we'll certainly be seeing more of him at Yankee Stadium as a designated hitter will come into play for the three games in the American League ballpark. Daryl Strawberry, owner of two World Series rings, one with each New York team, the Mets and the Yankees. And now time for the thoughts of the two gentlemen who called the game. Let's go to Joe Morgan and Bob Costas. Well, Hannah, after squandering a fine pitching performance by Greg Maddox in game one, the Braves look to the man who over the course of the full season really has been their best starting pitcher this year, Kevin Millwood, to get them even tonight. But Millwood did not have it. That was evident from the outset. Chuck Knobloch, the leadoff man, hammers an 0-2 fastball into center. Next hitter, Derek Jeter, a single to left. Paul O'Neill, a 1-2 breaking ball, line to center, three straight singles to open the game, and whether the Braves knew it or not, the route was on, 1-0 New York. After Bernie Williams hit into a double play, Tino Martinez played it another run with a single to center. Scott Brocious did the same by the diving Ozzie Guillen. It was 3-0 New York before David Cohn ever took the mound. In the third inning, they added to it. Bernie Williams with a base hit up the middle. Tino Martinez goes the opposite way. Gerald Williams a diving attempt, but it squirts away from him. Ricky Lede launches a double to left center field. It's 4-0 New York, and that was the end for Kevin Millwood. He leaves without retiring a man in the third inning. Then to make matters worse, Ozzie Guillen somehow botches this looping liner off the bat of the pitcher, David Cohn. It was 5-0. The Yankees weren't satisfied with that. In the fourth, Jeter leads off with a double to left center. Braves could have turned a double play, but Keith Lockhart couldn't find the handle, then threw it away on the pivot, and Jeter winds up scoring. On to the fifth. Knobloch is at it again, a hard single to left. That produced another run as Brocious scored. All the while, David Cohn is mowing them down. He did walk five in seven innings of work, but he allowed only one hit while he was in there. This was that hit, a leadoff single in the fifth by the catcher, Greg Myers. But he was quickly erased on a double play hit into by Andrew Jones, 5-4-3. By the time the ninth inning rolled round, Cohn was a spectator, Ramiro Mendoza was on. Chipper Jones, who had singled to open the inning, scored on that hit by Greg Myers. Jeff Nelson came on in relief. Pinch hitter Brett Boone doubled down the left field line. But this is all much too little and much too late for the Braves. That made it 7-2. And Nelson finally was able to close things out as Otis Nixon grounded. To Derek Jeter. The truth of the matter is, harsh as it may sound, as the Yankees congratulate Cohn, the Braves through two games have had only one meaningful hit. That was Chipper Jones' homer in the fourth inning off El Duque, which gave them a 1-0 lead in the opener. Meanwhile, the Yankees haven't cleared the fence yet in this series, but they peck away, peck away. And it may be funny to say, but that's because the Braves pitchers are getting out in front of these hitters. They're not falling behind 3-1 and one where the Yankees can tee off. A lot of these base hits have come with two outs and in clutch situations so they're trying to hit the ball back through the middle and not going for the long ball. So I think the Braves, even though they're not doing the job that they want to contain the Yankees, they're still not falling behind an account and giving the Bombers a lot of pitches that they can drive out of the ballpark. Time to turn the page and look ahead to Game 3, which will be Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. Tom Glavin, who won his last three decisions of the regular season and had a good outing in Game 3 of the LCS at Shea Stadium, will take the ball in New York again, this time in the Bronx, not Queens. His record was 14-11, and 11, as you see, and Andy Pettit had the exact same record for the Yankees. He'll be their starter in Game 3. Now back to Hannah. Thanks, Bob. And so the New York Yankees, just two wins away from their third World Series victory in four years. So impressive in the postseason. They are 20-3 and three over the course of the past two years. And this the final out in tonight's ball game. 
as the New York Yankees were winners in Atlanta, taking a 2-0 lead in the World Series by final of 7-2, and Otis Nixon grounder to short, ended things for the Braves. Small business software, $400. Letterhead, $610. Office supplies, $90. Remembering who you work for, priceless. MasterCard Business Bonuses lets you earn miles good on any airline, no blackouts. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. The painter Degas often lit his subjects with a glow from a window. Renoir used dappled sunshine. Toulouse-Lautrec, the flicker of gas lamps. But when leading museums need to light a Degas, a Renoir, or a Lautrec, they choose revolutionary GE halogen bulbs. These bulbs make any room look its best, whether it's home to a Renoir or something equally priceless. You no longer control your company. Your customers have taken over, and they know what they want. Give your customers the information they want so they can work with you, even for you. If you don't pay attention to them, they'll find someone who does. So, how do you like your new boss? PeopleSoft. Applications for e-business. The video game signals the refrigerator and the robot dog brings it to me. Timmy, did you get some help with your project? Did I? I used their little DNA technology from Motorola. Digital DNA? Yeah, yeah. Their engineers came in during the concept stage. They helped streamline the board design. You know, chips, system, software. If your company has an idea for smart technology, our company can help make it a reality. I thought they just made semiconductors. Digital DNA from Motorola, the heart of smart. Stay tuned. Immediately following this World Series report, we'll be back with more of National Geographic Explorer, picking up right where we left off. A lot of talk about the Atlanta Braves' futility on offense. At the start of the night, Bobby Cox fiddling with his starting lineup, put some left-handed batters in there, Ozzie Guillen and also uh, Keith Lockhart, and both of those gentlemen struggling defensively tonight. Braves had two big errors last night by Brian Hunter and an error tonight by Ozzie Guillen kind of started things off. Yeah, Bobby was trying to kick the offense today and uh, surely didn't expect that the guys wouldn't turn the place defensively, and they didn't do that for him today. Uh, here we see, uh, I guess, it's the... Uh, yeah, the line drive. It looks like Ozzy maybe it lost the flight of the ball right there. Maybe took his eye off the ball. Maybe he got in the lights. I know that happened to me here at Turner Field. Uh, here they can't turn the double play. The throw not bad, but uh, Lockhart can't turn the double play. And uh, the ball to Springer. Nobody at the bag yet. He throws low. Ozzy can't turn it at first base. So, you know, you can't give a team like the Yankees more outs than three in any inning. And that's what they did tonight, and I think that's why they came on the short end of the stick. Okay, the Yankees, a lot of extra outs. Meanwhile, the Yankees managed to turn three double plays, so no problems there. Well, they've been getting the pitching. It all starts with the pitching, and when they need a double play or need a ground ball, their, their pitchers are throwing the ball down in the zone, and, uh, you know, they're on top of their game right now. All right, Barry, see you at Yankee Stadium. That's all from Atlanta, where the Yankees took Game 2 of the 1999 World Series by final of 7-2. to two. They take a two games to none lead back to New York for game three Tuesday night at Yankee Stadium. The pitching matchup will have the Braves Tom Glavin against the Yankees Andy Pettit. Join us on NBC Sports Tuesday starting at 8 o'clock Eastern for game three the first pitch set for 820. For Barry Larkin, Jim Gray, Craig Sager, Joe Morgan and Bob Costas I'm Hannah Storm saying good night from Atlanta. We'll see you Tuesday night from New York. Right now we return you to the National Geographic Explorer.